Welcome into the Cam District Podcast, episode number 98. Oh, shit. Sergachev. Yeah, that motherfucker just signed up for I didn't even deal. think we were doing this. Like, is this a thing now? Are yeah. we starting every podcast yeah. going over the numbers? Yeah, yeah. We're going to figure out to, the next one I, pretty I, good. I've always hated in the past when you work in radio and right when the show starts, uh, or you come back from a break and the producer plays a song and everybody starts talking about like what song it is or who's playing. Like I, I, that drives me crazy. I feel like we're doing that now. Now we're trying to you know who's the who's who wore number ninety eight. I don't give a fuck who wore, wore number ninety eight, but I also don't give a fuck what kind of song that you listen to on the intros with the radio show that you do mm. is usually some from nineteen fucking thirty. Not true. Bull fuck. That's not 19 true. Nineteen fucking thirty, and you're like, oh yeah, I like this. <laughs> I remember night the thirties. They were great. The fucking dust ball and the fucking the decline in our economy, that's awesome. What are you talking about? You listen to old ass shit. No, I don't. And you act like you fucking like it. And it ain't cool. You know what I listen to? What? Hip hop oh, and reggae. You're fucking awesome. <laughs> Here's what I did last night, guys. Honestly, I was in a good mood last night. Had a couple bottles of wine. We're chilling. And I just look up shit on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I look up Ronnie James Dio. Fucking badass. Rest in peace, baby. What's up? Ronnie James Dio, 1986, live from wherever the fuck. And he's singing heaven from hell and he's so like he's a, he's a th he's so th like he brings theater into the fucking that sounds like a fun night oh what do you listen to again that sounds fun marvin gay no is that what you although listen to? he has you the best probably, rendition I don't mind him. of the national anthem ever I, and I don't mind he's him. ridiculous on vocals you he doesn't need any music you in the background. hang out with old, no you hang out with old people whenever you do shows older people who i love that's you, the industry no, no, no. both fu but the fuck on how's that industry doing <laughs> hey, How's the industry with all old men doing? One of the shows I Get do here. here locally yeah. happens to have two people that are... We love them, by the way. We do. We love them. One of them I'm making fun of you on this. Okay. No, they, you no, should no, be no. making I'm, fun I'm, of them. Fuck that. They're fucking 80 years old. You're fucking in your 30s. And they listen. They play their music from the 50s. And Andy's sitting there like trying to sing to it, acting like he's cool. <laughs> Like he grew up in the fucking fifties, <laughs> and you're like, "What? Who the fuck? How I don't can even you, know who it is." You fucking talking? I don't about even know who it shit. is. Look, go on, listen. If you want to go down rabbit holes on YouTube, I could listen to Iron Maiden, old school fucking Ooh, Ronnie James, Dale, cool. baby, Who's fucking Ronnie Ozzy. James? Who's Ronnie he's James? He's core new. He died, and he's still core. How'd he you. die? He was old. I don't know, fucking. He's a rock star. What do you want to do? But go down and look at Pink Floyd back in like Pompeii like and Floyd. shit like that. Yeah, dude. And you know I like the jam bands too, and you know that. No, and I like fish and all that shit too. I'll jam out to all yeah. kinds of shit. I'll, I'll jam out to anything. I, if your mind's right, you're sitting with your girl, you got the fucking fire. I'll listen, listen to, to some widespread panic. Okay, fine. Uh, they're fine. But the A point little is, bit of leftover salmon. I like the bluegrass too. I like funk. I like P funk. Dude, Blue, my music fucking interest bluegrass? is so much well rounded than yours. You don't know You listen shit. to heavy metal. I listen to and that's it. Dude. I do listen. I like techno. I think you're the only one I know that listens I'll give to you heavy another, metal on I'll, the regular. I'll give you another example. Hmm. And I'll, nothing against heavy metal. Good, because you'll get your fucking ass kicked. <laughs> I'll shit on. I'll sit on a boat. You'll not shit on a boat. Maybe shit on the boat. I'll shit in the water. Would unless you? they have a no. fucking a. I would if we're in a cove in the middle of nowhere okay, and I gotta no. take a dump. I'm going to the water. You can't. You, you can't do that. Yes, you, you. Wait, time out. Yes, you can do that. Andy. Okay, people yes, swim in there. And it's the lakes are in of there. one of the biggest lakes in fucking U.S. Bruh. Oh, the lake that you go to? I'll shit in that fucking lake. I but would here, never do that in my lake that I go oh, to. Oh, you're a pretty boy. Well, you go to a pond. No. I, Here's the deal. What's and the you'll of, get arrested. What's the name of my lake? Pond Boy. No, I forgot. Here's the deal. I go on YouTube pond and boy. I jam out to concerts. And if I'm sitting on a lake, kicking my feet up, mm -hmm. I'll listen to anything. You want to put, I'll put this on. PPK. PPK. Russian techno band in the 90s. Oh, yeah. They're fucking bad. I'll listen to PPK. PPK? PPK, a Russian band. I'll be sure to ask... Uh, I don't even know if that's called that. about that. Next but time I'll sit on town. a boat in a goddamn cove and listen to Pink Floyd oh, and yeah. fucking Zabba yeah, and some fucking Pearl Jam. And if Kate wants to get a little romantic, I'll put on fucking whatever the fuck. And you kick your feet up and you jam out and you look at the stars. Mm -hmm. Anything will do. Okay. But you said bluegrass. You're a fucking joke. What are you talking about? You said you like bluegrass. Bluegrass is sick. It's unbelievable. Oh, I like bluegrass. I don't listen to it mm -mm. on the regular. You're from the fancy part of fucking Ledoux. But if I'm hanging out, you put a little bit of bluegrass on, a little bit of funk, a little bit of P-funk to go along with some good-ass music. How would you wheel your wife? I like jazz. How would you wheel your wife? Because I'm well-rounded. How the fuck did you wheel your I'm, wife? Because I'm, I'm well-rounded. You got a dime at home, and I, I, I question. I, I do have more money than I think you do. Do you? <laughs> 
your fucking hey, wife, you're I like, you? I want to listen to bluegrass. Hey. She's like, go fuck yourself. Hey, listen, one day my wife, she was waiting underneath after a blues game and we got finished and not a whole lot of people left. Have you got done playing? Whatever. Yeah, probably had <laughs> a couple apples. Yeah, yeah. Fight goal into assist, maybe a fight. Took your jersey off. I'm about, to get, I'm about to get into my cor- take about to get into my Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I so remember listen, those days. So man. we're walking, yeah. And uh, Al McKinnis is behind us, and he kind of catches up. And it's you know how right? Al is, man. He's got great one liners. He's the best. And he walks by, and he goes. Andy, have you told your wife you don't play for the Blues yet? Oh! <laughs> or, Dude, that is such a... No, seriously, It's though. such an Al quote. He goes, no, no, no. He goes, Andy, have you told your wife you're not a player? Or Dude, I like remember that. walking out in the Blues games. My buddies... This is when Larry Plow was involved. Mm-hmm. My buddies would park underneath. Derek would park underneath. How would they park underneath? They just would. They'd take Kate and all my girlfriends. Kate, mm-hmm. not the time. Kate, I, would, I didn't have Kate at the time. So take my girlfriends, and they'd park underneath... And they go down, they go right to the wives' lounge and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And then we, they'd have passes, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but you can't park underneath. Like it's re- it's just like, ridiculous see, how loose it was. When you say underneath, Means you're talking about the like underbelly where the players under park. Yes. where the players, owners, and so and really even management like they kind of park at the lower the first floor of the garage. My, They're not even parked underneath. No, they Andy, could if they wanted to. My buddies were parking underneath and bringing girlfriends in. And they'd hang out in the wives' lounge, and Kelly Backus would get pissed at them because we'd yeah. overtake well, I everything. I don't blame her. I don't blame her either. But then after the game— Wouldn't you tell your— like, See, if I were you— I did. I'd be like, dude, guys, do Andy, not go in there. Andy, don't be seen. Don't be f- heard. This is the first year we were out of control. I didn't know how to react to anything. I didn't know what was what mm-hmm. was right, what was not right. We are in a fantasy land. I just got done dealing with Lou Lamarillo, and now I'm in my hometown with all my buddies, and I'm taking is advantage of the situation. Is this when you wore your rhinestone jeans? I would do anything. I mean, because you used to wear rhinestone jeans. This guy would walk around. I remember going to an event, and you were there. You probably don't even remember. It was um, like we were like celebrity waiters yeah. to raise money at a restaurant, mm-hmm. and they had some players there, and um, and I was there too. And like you show up in like this tight like – Shirt, my Corvette. I don't. I probably not. Probably got dropped off by your mom. Probably back then, or your dad dropped you off. Or, one or the other, or some dime okay. piece. Okay, and, and you're wearing these. You have like my rhinestone mom. jeans, like the women wear. Yeah, out like in your parts, maybe like yeah. some like some rhinestone jeans. What did I do that night? <laughs> like what did I do? Did that you raise night? any money? I mean, what did, did I do you that? raise any not money? Not only did I raise money, but what, what do you think I did that night, though, Andy? Andy's turned me for my fucking rhinestone jeans, but like, <laughs> what, I've never what, seen what, a man. Wear what those? car did I get into, and who was with me that night when we left and partied? Like, get um, on with yourself. But here's my point of the well, parking underneath. Like, Andy, you'd walk out with me. Mm-hmm. We get done with the game, and I have 15 of my buddies with girls, and who are you kidding? You get done, you walk right out with me and jump in the fucking... In the Corvette? In the, no. You jump in the... I had a big truck at the time. I didn't take my... My Corvette was there. I had yeah. my girl drive that. You didn't that drive home. that very often, right? No, that was the, end of, the later what, age. What, what you, else were you driving? Point is, like a Tahoe or something? Yeah, big Tahoe. And you'd walk out with me, and we'd jump in, the car together with everybody. So who the fuck are you kidding? You never questioned my buddies parking down there. You never questioned anything okay. at a time. I'll never so who forget are you when Patty Maroon came and played in St. Louis. One of the first times he had played in St. Louis, he had a bunch of bodies. Oh yeah, in the suite, South Were County, you in there with them, Hazen. and security's coming in, and like they're throwing people out. Like all oh, this shit was going like, down. Beer bong and shit and fucking. Like, if I was a player, that would make me mango. That would mango. make me so uncomfortable. To know my buddies okay. are there, like causing shit. Like unless totally. I was a star, star player and like I could do no wrong, but I would be like, oh god. I'm a fourth line plug, but I I lived here. And you didn't mind them doing that. I, at the beginning, I didn't. Okay, now hear me out. At the beginning, I thought I'm walking. You're walking on water at mm-hmm. the beginning. Like the the attention the Blues give you, especially when you're a hometown guy. Like you feel like you're fucking T.J. Oshie. Like you're scoring 50 a year, but that's on them. They who, pump, who gives you that? You mean like the fans the and fans stuff? The fans and the media and everything. No, you, but here's I, me. I don't think it would have mattered if you were from Delaware. No. If you play your role historically in St. Louis, yeah. dude, people who play your role Andy, are worshipped by the but fans. When you, That's just the reality of it. You're the first one ever to make it. Except there's grew, one or two that just for whatever reason weren't that popular. I'm trying to figure that out. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> like, but, why weren't you more popular so when let you're me explain, fighting every single But let me explain, though. Yeah. Being from here and all that stuff, and at, at the beginning, I remember like, taking advantage of the situation and then i'm like what the fuck am i doing mm-hmm. okay hear me out so like i pull my tires up like yeah we fucking party all the girls and all that stuff kelly back is pissed 
the the ownership group, and I'm doing my thing, but I got my buddies fucking trying to walk everywhere in the building, and they have no passes, and people are like getting pissed at them, but they're like, I'm with Cam, they're like, okay, let let go, but then they're putting everybody on the spot. Then I had a I had to hold a meeting, I swear to God, mm -hmm. with all my friends, my family. What kind of meeting? Like, do you like call a meeting? Yeah, and I sit them all down, and I go, listen, fuckheads, we can't do this, we can't do this anymore. When this is, is this? not a fan. Like your first year here. After my first year, after the first half a year, I got traded in 07. Mm -hmm. So I had that that, that two months, half of the year and that was psycho. Bro. After the trade, and then I was still me personally was so but, going into your first full year. Yeah, so I'm like, we can't do this anymore. You can't park underneath, like fucking shits. Yeah, yeah. this is like pro man. Like you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, this is not. I this had is my not going foot, to like a, a local rink. I'll give you an example real quick. I get traded to the Blues. Everything's a whirlwind. I get on a jet. I go to St. Louis. Everybody's waiting. I, I meet my buddies and all that shit. The Blues are playing that night, and I'm supposed to go to the rink. I think I broke that trade, by the you way. You did. And I brought my bag in, but I brought three <laughs> of my buddies down. Not my family, not my brothers. I bring, I, I fly in, my buddies meet me, they take us, take me to the game, we park underneath, and I walk underneath into the locker room two minutes before Eric Brewer <laughs> and the boys come out for the game. I have three of my buddies and Larry Plo, Kelly Chase, Burt Godin, and fucking Ray Burley like, hey Cam, how you doing? I'm like, hey, I got three of my buddies, not my family. And they're like, who who are they? I'm like, uh, these are my cousins. And they're like, oh, okay. And they sat in the locker room and watched everybody walk. And I'm thinking to myself, like, this should never happen. These guys should never be like Eric Brewer's coming with me, shaking my hand in front of my buddies, like when he's walking on the he's ice the for warm-up. Oh, he's the captain of the team. So you didn't play nerd. that night. Fuck no. Oh, a nerd. Are Brewer? you calling out Brew? Oh, he's a fucking nerd. <laughs> I feel like you don't like Eric Brewer. Man, he was I feel like to there's me. something I didn't know what between the, the two I'm, of you. I've never had I never had beef with Brew. I never beef with Brewer anyway. Patty Alash kind of pissed me off a couple of times and I called him out in practice a couple of times and and we were fine. But Brewer he would have, he would have dusted Brewer, you. Brewer, Ellie Ash. <laughs> so would Brewer. <laughs> oh, he was tough. Oh yeah. And uh so Brewer just kind of I, I rubbed them the wrong way. Ever. And I was going through weird, like, I know how he shit. is. And he's actually got a very dry <clears throat> sense of humor. Oh, fuck. And people who... He, he hated me, I think. No, I, I could see you and him would not get along. You see what I'm saying with that? And he and I, we've talked. You know what I'm talking I'm about. I'm going to get him on here, you actually. get him on. And when, I, when I've talked about this in the past to Cam, kind of like too. early when we started, Cam was not interested when I said, hey, I'm going to get Brewer on. So he and I have texted back and forth. i got to make that happen and schedule it. But I'll never forget when he was named captain. I remember yeah. John Davidson calling. He's like, what do you think? I'm like, I oh, think this fuck. is really strange. Oh, God. I, I, like, what? <laughs> you just named Eric Brewer. You got Brewer, Keith Kachuk, too. Who you just traded for in exchange for Chris Pronger, like probably the worst trade in, in Blues history at the time for sure. Oh, he I was mean, the nerdiest player you and, could possibly imagine. And he's under so much scrutiny, so much pressure because he's not Prongs. He's had injuries, and now you're going to put him even more so I under know. the microscope. Like He's I making a ton of money, so it doesn't Well, I, I don't understood that the fuck. coach, like Andy Murray, like felt yeah. comfortable. And he's like, oh, cool, a fellow Brewer. nerd. Here we go. Yeah, Let's go. Yeah, yeah. He felt and comfortable again, with that. Those guys are 10 times smarter than me. They have a lot more money than me. They're better per people than I am. They're better at They're, everything. Are they better looking you're than you? You're good. I'm not. You're the best. <laughs> I suck. I'm admitting that. But they, they just kind of... The one person that didn't understand my kind of like character, yeah, he just he just didn't get it. Well, you're too. And Andy, you're, you're way too loud for him. At the time, First I was off, really you're loud. Annoying too. him. I was at, at the, time the was Halloween like, party. Oh, I sprayed him with water. Yeah, I didn't even. Mean, do you like, notice you're running around like a little he kid? He said that to you. <laughs> no, you he, told me. Oh this. fuck, I was gonna say, <laughs> fucking guy. No, but you did. You I and Danny Hynote. Yeah, I was with fucking. But I think he liked Danny because he probably respected exactly. Danny because he, he, he was a little older than exactly. you and he had won a cup totally. and he came from the I am a hillbilly you know? that got to have a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. I was a fourth line piece of shit that played three minutes a, game, a, a night, every other night, but I had a lot of popularity. And mm -hmm. I thought the popularity, like your buddies and everybody that pumped you up, like you think you're higher than everything. So I lived right. in a fantasy land. Mm -hmm. And so. You really did. 100%. I did. In a fantasy land. I. Uh, a fucking fantasy fucking land like you can't believe buddies in my house all night long girls everything spending money drugs whatever the fuck it was but you go to the rink and like brew's in charge and i come in and i'm not like me fucking do this never that i'm just happy i'm just happy go lucky kind of like i'm gonna go out and do my job but brewer's more like a fucking he you was know, buttoned, stoic. he was buttoned up so and, buttoned and again up. so dry thank you he's actually very funny so 
Um, no, he is. He didn't make me laugh. No, he, he certainly he, didn't he make will me make laugh. you laugh. He didn't make me laugh. And he's got a dry sense of humor. But do you get why he could be mad at me? He was and never I get it. overly happy about being here. No, he didn't. But you're making a ton of money, motherfucker. I don't care. Mm. I don't care. You're set up for life. But he couldn't handle it. And I don't blame him. I look back at everything. He's probably living in Kelowna. He, oh, yeah. You know he's out west. Fucking sick. I hope he's not. He's probably living in a nerdy ass town where, like, fucking, like, there's like a, a library every two miles or somewhere he's reading shit. Oh, or is that, are libraries saying. for nerds? You go to libraries well, now? I don't go there. Go very on often. fucking line. I'd probably hang out there. I don't mean to be like that. Probably wheel. I, I'm being kind of a dick on this one, and I'm <laughs> sorry, but he, he just. He didn't like. I don't think he liked me, man. Well, and no, I think we've established that. And remember the so time. So we got we got we got to get him on here to figure out why get he didn't like Get his fucking ass on then. I'm gonna text I don't him. give a shit. But I get where where he would be. So when I when I kind of put myself up, like he brought me down, and I and I get it. But I still gotta make fun of him a little bit on this whole thing. But no, he was a uh, lightning rod for blues fans just because. Oh, first of all, God, he didn't he play got, very well. Oh, he he was bad. hurt. I always defended he was him. Soft too. Fucking He's soft. Not that soft. He's a big body. He wasn't a bad player, man. Andy. You're telling me Eric Brewer wasn't soft? Okay, what I'm telling is you is... Is that what you're saying? He wasn't like... Soft compared to you? No, hold on. What I'm telling okay. you, he wasn't like this big, bad, mean, tough, bruising defenseman. Dude, you're a captain of the St. Louis But he Blues. also wasn't um, like, you know, Christian Backman Did he either. Hit anybody? Who's my guy? I just got a... Uh, actually, a true story. Just got a tweet, a private message from a, a fan in Sweden who listens to every mm -hmm. episode. His name is Matthias. Can you Aww. give him a shout out right now? Yeah, Matthias, what's up, baby? Like, how Swedish is that? God, how Matthias. handsome. He's probably a handsome guy with long, blonde hair. Um... Christian Backman, great guy. I used to come to my kids' yeah. uh, uh, hockey him. practices when I coach. But he was a little bit soft. But he says to me, <laughs> he said to me, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he said, Christian Backman says hello. Isn't that uh, crazy? That's cute. I know. So, I mean, it's just kind of uh, I don't know what this funny. Is, I didn't know where. I, Alex, uh, Alexi Havanoff, remember him? Kind of. I got an email from him at like three in the morning, like a few weeks ago. He's like, Andy, what's up? I'm oh, like, I haven't I like talked that. to you in like 20 years. He used to smoke, I like that. He used to smoke darts. Oh yeah, um, parliaments. Parliaments aren't bad, man. I like, take them bad inside boys. the dressing room, like you know, whatever, where people couldn't see. So like, or like trainers would do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like alumni. <laughs> uh, yeah, chaser would go down, and <laughs> act like he's no, smoking a dart. No, so they would. He would smoke darts down there, like between periods and after games all the time. And I just wondered, like, I was always like, how do you get away boy. with that? I don't know. He'd walk around with his like smokes in his hand, like, and go put them back in his stall. As he's walking back into the room, I, I, yeah, well, I didn't see. Too, we should have asked. Well, Terry he's like the last version. We've got I, did I ask Terry Riley about the cigarette thing? No, you didn't I had ask my him. Fucking I know, notes. I know. Well, we had to get off early with him because I he know. was uh, antique shop. Antique shop. Well, speaking of nerd, he might be a nerd too. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm mean, a tough nerd. At least Brewer. <laughs> Well, at least Terry Riley is a tough nerd. But fucking I think Brewer. Brewer. I remember Brewer fighting a couple times and actually and like winning the fights. Andy, did he not? What the f I thought you were. Like, you're I remember smart. him fighting Andy, you're the smart once or one. twice. You're the smart one. Like he'd fight angry. You have a memory mm -hmm. of the. You're the memory so of the this, podcast. That's exactly what happened. You're the memory of the podcast. Yeah. Eric Brewer beat up who? I don't remember who it was. Who did he beat up? But he fought somebody. Okay. Um, and it fall down? Did he fall down real quick? No, I don't think so. I think he threw lefts. Eric was a. I think he went toe to toe down the pipe. <laughs> yeah, down the pipe. Chris Simon style. <laughs> Dave Brown. Oh my god, I watched a fucking video of Dave Brown today. What a psycho. And there's a eh? there's a there's a music. The music was, it's like this. It's old like kind of country song that you probably like because it's probably bluegrass. Andy, you fuck. I like some funk, some bluegrass. You don't, you don't know what you like, but here's the deal. You might like this because they had a, a like a music montage of Dave Brown, who was one of the toughest guys, and they had a guy singing about. A guy named Leroy Brown, who's six foot four, and he beat up everybody. And the song went perfectly into Dave Brown smashing guys on YouTube. Check that out, guys. Mm -hmm. I entertain everybody. Go on YouTube. I'll tell you what the fuck to listen to. Not only Ronnie James Dio, but go to Dave Brown music montage. And this this song. We've been in touch. I forgot he he works. Can for a he team. come on he works our for a fucking team. show? He works for a team. He works for fucking Philly, and he's a head scout. But. You asked him, yeah. get his ass on, left heat motherfucker, badass dude. Leroy Brown is a song. Check that out on YouTube, guys. I know it's kind of I know weird. all about Leroy Brown. You know Leroy Brown. It's a do. song. Can we play that song, Jamie, it's, in this edition? Can please. we play a little Leroy Brown? Leroy Brown, six foot four. <laughs> He's tough as a junkyard dog. Get his ass was. in there. Check that out. But people have to understand here with uh, Terry O'Reilly. Not Ryan O'Reilly, Terry O'Reilly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ryan O'Reilly's got a little son, Jameson. Like, he and Ty were like, oh, he was like, can I show Ty my room? Yes. I was like, take Ty, <laughs> take him. You could show him everything. I want Ty to be like you and James look like so you. so cute, man. God, Ty does look like Ryan O'Reilly a little bit with that he's, long he's ass He's got some flow. Why does Ty not look flow. like you? 
No, he does. Why is he so no, unbelievably he looks handsome? Just like me. Why do I want to? Can I, am I his godfather? <laughs> you can be. No, we I'm dead to, serious. We have to make that. Andy feeds Ty <laughs> kale and grass, and I'm like, "Give me this kid. I don't have kids. I know I'm a psycho. No, you're gonna have kids, but I know how my Kate dad told did it. the lady no, when you were like, I'm dumping loads in her left leg. When you went I, all like, I, uh, I, uh, uh, where'd you play? In uh, England? Where? What's yeah, it? Nottingham. When, when she went Nottingham on this lady about, like, the castles in the field and, like, yeah, Cleopatra yeah. and yeah, all yeah, this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, She's Cleopatra. Yeah. So so she kept saying family. So I figured, I, like, you're not on the same page with what no. she's planning on I'm, here in the I'm future. I'm Ty's godfather. <laughs> and he's going to come to my house, and I'm going to feed him fucking steak like a man. And we're going to do, like, punching bag shit. And I'm going to take him outside, and we're going to wrestle around. And I'm like, this is how you do it. And then he's going to go back to you, and you're going to feed him kale and all that shit. But he's going to gain muscle by hanging out with me. He'll have a little bit of both. A little bit of both. What's he going to get from you? Fuck like hockey sense. No, oh, that's what it is. Vision. That vision. Passing I ability. Saw you. Get the fuck on, Leo. Leo. Get out of here, Leo. <laughs> oh, Ty's like the handsomest kid in the fuck. I don't know what he is. I, every time I look. Your wife puts pictures up. Did you see his pictures today? This, can, I, can I chirp other people first real quick? She posts too much. She does a little bit, but when you when you're a wife and you post pictures of your kids doing the exact same thing over and she doesn't do this. Now hear me out. Mm-hmm. When you're a wife, all y'all, your wife's posting pictures of your kids, and it's the same picture, and they're like, "I'm drinking something," and then here's a picture of me drinking it, but it's a little bit down now because I took it's like eight, an, it's like an old school it's like an action, animation it's, flip book exactly. <laughs> And if you you're put like, all the Instagram posts together, at, it'll make at, like, a, doing. like look, a little animation now cartoon. He's, now he's looking at the cat. Look, I'm taking a picture. Now he's walking to the bathroom. I'm gonna, Stop that. Oh, I'll be right back. Stop that. I don't give a fuck about 80 pictures of your kid. But when your wife does it with Ty, <laughs> Ty's sitting there in the front porch with this fucking flow. Today. And, he's, and he's looking at the camera like, I'm a fucking wheel. And I'm like, is that my kid? Is that my? Did I have a kid? Is that him? No, because his hair. Oh my God, I'm looking at. No, his hair is too, he's way too handsome for me. But on the other hand, I have to be his godfather, dude. He's got to eat steak. He's got to get a little tough. Mm-hmm. A little tough. He's got some of that. He, does he? Oh, yeah. From who? Well, for me, I mean, oh, Jesus. we just we watch oh, videos. God, we watch almighty. videos, old fight videos. He oh, loves the Uncle fights. Cam needs to take charge here, baby. Just once in a while, let Uncle Cam take over. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm game fucking for that. Serious. You're more than welcome. Yeah, your wife's Come not going to let Your wife's not going to let that happen. Oh, she'll let that happen. You think so? Oh, yeah. She wouldn't care about that. So we got. I want tell- him to be a wheel. <laughs> well, That's it. I mean, apple doesn't fall too. too Excuse how does me? It go? Apple's no, exactly. Fall You're too. not a wheel. I'll tell him. The apple doesn't fall from whatever the fuck it is. Doesn't matter. <laughs> the kid's a wheel, and he needs to be, and I'm taking over. All right, we got we to gotta tell people about Terry O'Reilly. Like, people have mm. to understand. Every guest we get, they're just different. They Sometimes are. it's unpredictable, Very especially when so. we have a, a guest on who we don't know personally, have never talked to before. But, like, they're legends in the history yeah. of the game. Yeah, yeah. And they left their mark. Like, they left a, 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 a personality behind that people can identify with. Like, they're like, oh, yeah, that guy was either an uh, incredible player, great goal scorer, sick passer, or just a psychopath, whatever, yeah. tough as shit, whatever it is. And for this guy, man, he, he, he checked off so many of the boxes. But again, you got to keep in mind, like he is seventy years old. He's not. He know, he's yeah. not going to be all like crazy and wild. Like he had his wife in the car, so everybody's going to be a little bit different. So I don't know what the expectations are. Yeah. For Terry O'Reilly, because his name's bigger than what I think he provided, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. But you got to understand too. Like I even asked Terry. I think it was just, and we asked all these old school '70s guys that are so popular now, right? But I think at the they time, get very buttoned up, dude. They get so. I'm like, dude, Terry, you get it at 19 years old. You're fucking buckling, motherfuckers. You're scoring goals. You got great hair. You're sexy looking. You're loud. I go, how was it when you went places? He's like, oh, no, Bobby Orr is a pimp. Or Bobby Orr was yeah, more was of guy. a... But I'm like, what? what the fuck does that but, mean? But I asked Johnny Wensick. I said, I said, what was... Uh, like, Because I did the research. You know, I call people. Like, to find out like, oh, some you annoy information. People, which I, okay. That's why so, I hired you. So I asked Wire. I said, tell me about about uh, Terry O'Reilly because they're really close friends mm-hmm. and I said you know what was he like away from the rink was he you guys have a lot of you know good times together whatever would he hang out he said you know back then everybody hung out yeah right yeah yeah, yeah totally I mean you go to somebody's house it's not like half the team or three-fourths of the team it's everybody yeah. so everybody hung out but he said I don't remember ever not once with us playing together in Boston ever seeing him drink a beer <coughs> Great, great answer, right? Me coughing into the mic. 
<laughs> I thought you were going to give one of those. <gasps> 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 no, you're right, though. What? And, and everybody did. Not only did they drink beer, but they probably smoked darts during the yeah, fucking he, game. He didn't, he didn't drink. So I look at a guy like Terry O'Reilly, and I kind of look at what I did, and I'm like, I wanted to be so loud and like in people's faces. He was loud on the ice. And you know what? That's what it was. I think he was, and, and I really mean this, because guys who play with him will say this about him. He was the consummate teammate, man. Exactly. You mess with anybody on the team. Yeah. You knew he was going to be there. But you could still be that way. And, and be kind of loud. And like Wire would say, hey, listen, he would play quiet. There, there would be games when he's quiet. But that just meant no one on the other team crossed the line. Yeah, yeah. And he but wasn't once the big they boy. did, well, no, because he could score goals. He could make plays. Made he could do all that. points a year. He was good in front of the net. Yeah. Like, you know, so I'm sure he probably got some power points. play time, all that stuff. You know, I don't remember. You know, maybe you can tell me if you watch any games back then what it was like. If he I played on the play, whatever. I wouldn't lie. <laughs> okay. So, so, so you wouldn't know what I'm saying. So, I mean, he scored 29 goals. He was an NHL All-Star one year. But at the end of the day, if somebody like you know crossed the line, you like I said, then all you. of a sudden he's looking to he's he's stepping up, and now things are going to change. But the reason, and I get he that. may even go in the stands and attack somebody. Yeah, no, I get all that. And then Milbury that. takes his shoe. But what'd you do afterwards? Like you're a fucking pimp. Everybody's staring at you. Number twenty four. There's st- women. Everybody's staring at you. How the fuck did you handle it after the game when you went and got a fucking burger at the fucking at O'Reilly's down the road? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's like Irish I'm Irish like, pub. The, the O'Reilly's down the road in Boston, which is probably fifty of them. Like then they like like tell me about that. Like did you walk in there and everybody's like, oh my god, it's Terry O'Reilly's got a cut over his eye. Like I want I want him. Mm-hmm. Like he did, he was like, oh we didn't do anything. I'm like, what do you mean? How do you not do anything? Like, I wasn't that popular because Bobby Orr is popular. We know no pop. Yeah, but you That's just, just never sh- know. No, my point is, I think that they look at themselves. Listen to me. Mm-hmm. Even Terry O'Reilly, we look at him as a superstar. Like a fucking superstar. Everybody does now. But at the time. As a legend. As a legend. But at the time, you had Esposito. You had fucking Orr. You had all these monsters. So I think the respect value yeah. of the bigger. Jerry Cheevers, man. The, I mean, you again, can go on and on. A bunch of Hall of Famers on so those So when teams. you're young like that, even though you're popular, you don't know what popularity is because. There's Jean no, Rattel. There's no fucking Facebook, Twitter, nothing. Right, right. So you can't judge yourself. Like, right. I'm more popular than Bobby Orr, although I'm a tough guy. Twister mm-hmm. or whatever who would be that, that, yeah. that, that way. But then you get to know some of these guys who played back in that era. And you can envision which guys were a little bit wild. Like, but you know, like Bobby Plager. You know, Bobby Plager. Oh, Jesus. Dude, he had it. fun away from the ring. There rink. it is. Okay? You're absolutely right. I think back in the day, though, like, these young superstars now on these teams, they gravitate off of your social, your your popularity through social media. And a lot of these guys that aren't as big are bigger than the big guys that should be bigger because of social media. So it, 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 it affects your mindset mm-hmm, on mm-hmm. how confident you are. So my point is... And when Bobby, he, Bobby Plager, for people, he, he does get involved in social media a little bit. Oh, like, I don't know if Terry O'Reilly is like tweeting. You Bobby know? texts me every fucking... I can't even tell you what it is. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell you what no. it is. He texts me every day. And I have to be like, okay, Jesus. And hey, listen, we're going to get Bobby on. We're going to. But my, can I finish my point? But it's got to be. I think be. Terry Bobby's O'Reilly. has got to be Bobby. I think Terry O'Reilly's like, no, Bobby Orr's the best. I'm not going to. I don't act right. like I'm cool. I don't like if you're a young kid where you have, you have a million followers when you're young. You're like, I'm fucking better than everybody. So I think it's just a respect value. So when I'm like, Terry, when you walked into a bar, was everybody like, Dude, can, I want to name my bar after you. And he's like, no, not at all. I'm like, How? How is they did it to me and I'm no, a piece but of I shit. Think he basically he'll, he'll, he says it in the interview and people will hear it. How his celebrity grew though. You okay. Know? And then he over be, the years yeah, a little bit. He yeah. becomes captain again. You know, and that's when all of a sudden you know the Ray yeah, Borks are coming that in and stuff an, like that. that. That was in the late. That was mid-80s. after he was crushing guys. Time it was, out though. Mid eighties. Yeah. They're chanting his name, but the point is like now if you're a first year rookie, and you have a good year. You're pumped up on so many oh, different yeah. levels. So you walk back in the locker room like, I'm a fucking pimp. Like, no, you're not. You right, haven't done shit. Right. You had one year. Where Tara O'Reilly back in the day is like, you have to earn it for years That's and That's the years way it years. was, man. Howard Stern makes fun of people all the time. He just signed a new contract. $125 million a year, baby. Is that what he's getting? Yep. So he goes, oh, you got a podcast. Who doesn't have a, who, do you have a radio show from a company? And then have a podcast? That's a different story. But anybody can have a fucking podcast. How many podcast people fucking ask you to do shit? You want to look at my messages real quick, I'll Andy? I'll show you mine, too. You, you want to bet on I'm, I'm trying to see to who be, has more? No, but it's, I, it's not a competition. But I'm trying to be better at that. 
and there's a couple people out there probably listening right now. I will get back to you. I apologize. I'm try- they don't you're, care. you're trying to help me. They don't care. You've been telling me to get back, you know, whatever. Do that. It's just hard, man. Not when everybody. I get home, it's I'm like saying, it's hard I to know. like my brain only works so long. But for a, if if a, if a kid wants to ask me to do a podcast and he's a big fan of mine, I'm like, but, fuck. But here's the deal. I have to do it. But if my only availability is like eight o'clock at night because oh, I've been God, gone all day, I'm sloppy, and right? I get home and Ty wants to play hockey in the in the in nope, the, in the basement and nope. whatever, and yep. I gotta be like, uh, I gotta go do a podcast for I, no, dude, it's not Ty fair, man. For, it's not fair. Think, for, for, I'll give you my example. My cat will be like, meow, meow, meow. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I'll fucking feed your ass. I'll do a podcast. <laughs> That's the difference. Right. Ty wants to play fucking hockey in the basement, and some fucking guy from fucking Manitoba wants to do a podcast. You tell me to do a nine o'clock, Saskatchewan. and you fucking sit with Ty, and you do one tease, but and have him slick his fucking hair back like Sergey Fedorov. Oh, I'm, there you I, go. Dude, don't make me come over to your house. I'll take over. A Fedorov. He, I'm the he Godfather. He needs a Fedorov. He, dude. Jersey. Get a fucking one tease, bam, one tease, backhand, top shelf, backhand, top shelf. Mm. I know you got. We the want net. Fedorov on the show. Fuck. We're trying to get a deal, a Russian phone deal, where it won't. Yeah, like, no shit. Cost we our, need Alexander won't, McGillany won't too. cost our producer nineteen ninety nine. Those guys will come on here, dude. Oh hell yeah! Al, if we get a hold of Almo, like Almo, what, what time? We'll get up nine o'clock. What, whatever you want to do. You are so sweet. <laughs> Three to in me. the morning. God, you were so sweet to me. I wanna, was, well, I want to talk to I you. Love him. I mean, that's Defected, when he. That's like when he. Badass. That's when he knew it was over. When he was on the same line as you, I he know. was like, "Okay, my career is officially and he, over." And he wasn't a dick. I know. He never said one fucking mean thing to me, dude. Like Brewer. Like fucking Eric Brewer. He's like, I need to talk to you, Cam. You and DJ King were like too much at the Ricky party. I'm like, what the fuck do we do? <laughs> like, you guys were fighting on the bus. Like, we're play fighting, you oh, fucking you're idiot. you're one of those. I'm going to fucking get his ass off. Weren't you reading I'm like an e He's such a fucking nerd. Or something? Get his motherfucking ass off. How to invest? Fucking. You should have been like BJ Crombie. Then invest. BJ's the best of the best. <laughs> you should have been like BJ Crombie. I love BJ Crombie so much. He was my roommate. I love that man. He is the sweetest, he is the smart best, man. I love that man. I used to tell him I was a better midget player than him. You were not. <laughs> you were not. That's what he was BJ is. I love that guy. I hope he listens because I know he kind of oh. probably does, dude. dude he's, he's a and he's fucking smart. Best. Brewers was, a dick to me. He was going to University of Phoenix during his NHL career. No. He calls me. A bunch of guys. I talk to him business. Baby. Tyson Cra- uh, Strachan. He I played love with Strax. He was the best, too. Him. He would throw down a little bit. I love him. I love all He's those like guys. a financial advisor. D'Agostini. All, I, I love oh, everybody. I've never D'Agostini. not loved people. Me and You Burr- guys were hilarious. You guys had <sighs> no a little shit. corner in the dressing room with Brad Winchester. Oh, God. And D'Agostini. I know. And you. And Abais. And Crombie. We're and fucking s- this and loud. And Saboka would be on the other side. Big and guys, dick he'd, Saboka. He'd chirp you, though. He's got a big dick. He could do what he wants. Monster. <laughs> oh, is that true? Oh, he's got a monster hog. It's you so said fucking that about gross. Polak. Polak's. All the checks. I don't give a shit. If I say it on a radio, local radio, I'll, give, I'll say it here. Polak's penis is so fucking big. It was actually disgusting looking, to be honest with you. But if you're in the shower with him, it would sniff the fucking drain. It had like a mind of its own where it's like, uh, it'd like sniff around and like smell things. Okay. Like, get the fuck away yeah, from me, Jesus. that big old penis. Jesus. I'm just saying. That's too much. Well, fuck, get in the shower with him and you'll he, see. He was a hell of a. Penis? He played a heavy oh, game. Yeah, <laughs> he was a tough guy. <laughs> <laughs> he did <laughs> heavy game. He was really heavy. <laughs> Good dude. Great, great wife. Guy. Great kids. He, so here, I'll give you. I won't pump his penis up anymore. But I'll say this with Ron Pock. he would beat everybody in the not just the weightlifting, not just the no uh, the whole strength everything test. strength test exactly. He skate too. and he'd beat everybody in the sprints on your stomach. I get know. up with that big I penis. He's like and a bodybuilder. Yeah. I, I think his brother and was he a had bodybuilder. Anchor on him. I want to get in before we get into uh, the yeah. interview with Terry O'Reilly. Yeah, old school. Was he a shit kicker? Is that what you'd call oh, him? Fucking right, he was lefty motherfucker. He's like Did punching I ask him about Andy his... Van Helleman running oh. into the stands. Punching. Would you have wanted to play in that era or no? Fuck no. Actually, I'll tell you this right now. I think I would do pretty good against some of these guys because mm-hmm. all they do is throw rights or they do is throw lefts. Like when I trained, I'm they training throwing low, lefts switch. and rights. I'm holding you back. I'm doing this. I could tie your jersey up in your neck and so you mm-hmm. can't grab me. Like it was all strategical when I fought. But back then it's like, oh, we're going to fight for – and then we're going to fight and throw as hard as we can and then fall down and step on each other and like kick each other in the face and shit. Like fuck no, I don't want to be involved in that. All right, so a lot of stuff uh, going on yeah. right now in the hockey world, whatever. I mean, we're going to have training camp sometime in early January. Although, let me say this. I talked to a GM yesterday who said, I'm still not convinced. I still think this thing's going to start on February 1st because he said, listen, players who aren't in Canada who play for Canadian teams, they still have to get there in quarantine for 14 days. No shit. And those guys are not going there before Christmas. I know. Okay? Yeah. They're not going to go there now and then hang out 
by themselves Yay. for Christmas, okay, and be away from their family where they can't go to someone else's house because they got a quarantine. That's not happening. So they're going to come in after Christmas. So I guess Austin Matthews, for example, I guess he could jump on the ice and start camp after everybody else there in Toronto. With his tight know. shorts on. I, oh my God. I don't know how that's going to go down. But if you just do the math and look at the calendar, it's interesting to think at, think about. I mean, if guys don't get there to close to the first and they got to quarantine, I'm talking about for the teams or the players that play for Canadian teams yeah. that have to get to Canada, 14-day quarantine, then they may have to quarantine until yeah. – Okay. Whatever, January 14th. Well, you got 50 guys on the team Until now, right? Jan- you know, whatever. Yeah. How these, can I ask you something? Because yeah. you're a nerd, and you're very smart. You're not Eric Brewer nerdy. You're cooler than that. But let me ask you a question. I know, I'm ripping them hardcore. Jesus Christ, sorry. My we bad. love Brewer, and I, I, and, and I have a great relationship. Then get his ass on. I don't care, because okay. I can't be a pussy and be like, I'm going to rip a guy and then not have him on. Give him on. But the point is with this whole thing, like, how are you going to have a 34-man roster, probably, and pay these guys out. And no, next, you don't, because the players that are on two-way contracts will make their American League salary. You're still paying a lot of money. You're paying their per diem. Seven hundred a week. These guys are gonna stay up for eight months. They'll get their per diem. A week. But the American League is supposed to start at some point too. So. Yeah, are they? Oh yeah. Okay. So at some point they're gonna start. But the point bigger is- the bigger question is for me. I was just talking to Carlo Coliacovo, yeah. Italian. We were kind of like disagreeing about something because I said, listen. The, the, the biggest question for me is how you're going to do the playoffs. Like, when can the Canadian teams play against an American team in the playoffs? Ask Justin Trudeau. And so, Carlo's like, well, there's, they just won't until the conference final, and hopefully by then they're going to be able to cross over. I said, oh, so one Canadian team has a chance of winning the Stanley Cup? Like, that, that does, that's not going to fly. Good call, man. That's not going to fly. She's telling me one Canadian team has yeah. a chance to win the Stanley Cup. Yeah. That's not going to fly for anybody, including the what, league. What team would that be? Who's the best Canadian what team? What team would that be? Think, don't think about it. I think Vancouver. Oh, really? You don't think they had the biggest setback? I like that kid in goal. And yeah, I, like love the their, I love their, I like little, their, their little sick little shifty defense. Who'd they, who'd they lose? Well, they lost the goaltender, Mark. They got Nate Schmidt. They got Nate Schmidt. They still have all these sick forwards. They lost some Horvat and, and Pedersen and all these guys. Yeah. You don't think Calgary's going to jump in the mix? I like Calgary, too. What about Toronto? Oh, my God. If Toronto doesn't do anything, I don't know. Toronto's got to prove it. Toronto's got to prove it. Wow, to me. And dude. I love Toronto. And I'd like to see Toronto be good. You know, it's funny. Whenever I'm looking for stuff for my kid, like hockey stuff, I always, I'm always like something about Toronto. Of course. Toronto and Montreal. Be? It's like, I got to give them something. You know. But um, I'd like to see, you know – I like all the Canadian teams. I honestly. do too. Winni- I want Winnipeg's somebody not my favorite team. Yeah, they get the small. You know, something about Winnipeg. Yeah, but I Montreal now with Jake Allen really and Joel Levinson, about. who I love his dad by the way, and he just came out and announced that his dad has lung cancer. Man. Oh I mean, no! He's just, uh, yeah. Oh no! Joel, we, uh, oh, we love, love it, Joel Levinson. Love Sweet your dad, heart. and his dad. You know, Ed is probably or uh, we call him Eddie. It's, yeah, it's all good, Ed. Eddie. Just but, call him Eddie. But he. Um, is he probably listening to the podcast yeah, right now, man. I'm thinking does. about you, love big you, time. And love your son you nothing too, by the way. Strength. He's a wheel so, and a he's a fucking tough guy. Yeah, he is. Tough. Love him. Yeah, and so a wheel. and he's had a contract extension, and you know it's funny because like he gets traded to Montreal. This is how things work. And his dad's favorite team growing up was always the Montreal Canadiens. Painted his office in Montreal oh, Canadiens colors and yeah, stuff like that. Man, now I his, love it. Now his kids on the on the Habs. You know, like you know this, Cam. It's just as big of a dream as it is for the for the parents and yeah. the dads. Who are like all of a sudden my kids in the show, and his, his parents drive around all over the place. They're constantly driving from one place to the next, watching games live. Yeah. So I just know how much it means to them. So I wanted to give him a no, shout. No, I get out it, and, and especially when you play in your hometown, man. Like yeah. actually, it, it's actually the reverse effect when you play in your hometown. And I'll give you an example. My mom and dad used to come watch me play the first four months, every game. I'd fly him in, or I'd basically fly him in because it's in Eureka. But I'd every have, game I'd have my my buddies come drive him in. Oh yeah, I have my buddies drive him in, walk him down. Amy and Dennis. I'd have them walk him down <laughs> like a fucking Cleopatra. They'd walk right up to the shit, and then my dad would sit in the in the stands, and he'd watch. Would he wear a Jansen jersey? Fuck no, no no no. He'd sit in the stands and watch every move I made, and everybody's like, "Cam's the best. Cam's awesome." And then you have that motherfucker in front of him. That says, you fucking suck, Jansen. No. And my dad, like, I, he looked at my mom. He goes, I cannot take this anymore. I'm going to kill this guy. And the guy's probably just some hillbilly that I probably knew. He's probably my buddy. Yeah, I probably went to high school with him. 
but he's beaking. Oh, this is the St. Louis games? It's the St. Louis's. The first six months when I first got played there, mm-hmm. my parents went to the games and do, like everybody would be happy, but the one motherfucker would be like, fuck you, you fucking. Yeah, that's got to be hard. And my dad's like, I, I can't do it. I can't do this anymore. Bob Edmondson, by the way. Sorry, I forgot his, I just remembered Bob. his name. Yeah. But my dad's like, I can't do this anymore. And so I just got him a brand new TV. TiVo at the time. It was like, they could rewind shit. Tivo. And, they, and they just stayed at home and drank wine and mm-hmm. watched everything. Oh, because they, it was too hard for them to deal with that. One, Were you getting chirped in the home stands a lot? No. Never. Like, move your seats. Well, all you had to do was go to the blues. You got like, 20,000 people. Time out. You got 20,000 people there, Andy. If you, I'm just telling you, there's always somebody saying something. They're walking around. People, Not to mention all his buddies in high school mm-hmm. are bugging my parents okay, all but day. just think if you're... Um, he can't take it What anymore. if you're Eric Brewer's parents or something No one like knows that. about him. I went, no, no, mean, no like, one even knows. People would that, chirp Eric Brewer oh, all the time in the oh stands. Could you imagine being their mom and dad? 100%. I mean, come on. You... I, I'm sorry, Cam. You didn't really get chirped a lot in the Not stands. At all. Okay. The one guy compared to a lot of what you if know. Who my dad what if is you're Jake Allen's dad, and you're struggling. I know. I mean, I know. Come on, man. no, no shit. But my point is, like, yeah. my dad can't fucking take it. No, I, 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 fucking, I wouldn't be able. You to think that. my dad's gonna say it's sixty, fifty-five years old at the time with my wife, with his wife, no. and they're and they're. My mom and, the, and like some fuck boy hillbilly with a cut off t shirts. Fuck, fuck you, fuck. My mom and you dad know are what? like, he they probably, can't he's do probably it. Probably a car salesman, too. He's probably my fucking buddy. He's fuck. probably my no, cousin. No, he's, he's a car salesman. Yeah, swinging dick yeah. motherfucker. I used to beat up on. Ca- I fuck came up in fucking high school, okay? I'll fuck his fucking girlfriend, too. My mom and dad are like, what? Oh, yeah. He didn't We're staying home to drink wine. He might suck, but you didn't bang but, his girlfriend. So, I'll tell you that. so that's what I'm saying. Uh, you know. I understand what you're saying, you but it's a little birth. bit different being the goaltender's parent. Totally. The pitcher's parent, the yeah. quarterback's dad. I lived there. I grew up there. My dad knows half the people in the goddamn stands, and they're mm-hmm. bugging the shit out of him. And then some hillbillies fucking bashing yeah. me because I haven't scored in 18 months. Um, the division Rightfully the, so. The, the division alignment. I, I don't know how they come yeah. up with this type of stuff, oh, but Jesus somebody sent me a Christ. map of how they decided. Oh, God. From, now, I will say this. Talking to people with the Blues organization... Mm-hmm. They're, they're, like, they're what not, are they saying? They're not, they, wor- they're not worked up on it at all. So oh, I'd be. Why? It's it's probably no. a harder division than what the Central because you no. do have the three headed monster Dallas, Colorado, I'm Vegas. I'm not talking hard. They, but they I'm don't not they don't care compet- about that. I'm not talking competitive. Late starts. I'm not talking. That's what it travel. Is. You have one team one team in the division that's in your time zone. Thank you. That's okay? the bitch of it. So I that's. Don't, but y- then. Okay, but you're gonna you're gonna make the playoffs. But if you go to the central division, all these teams that are they're that are good. in the east, they're all good. And you're changing. Well, no, they're all good too. You have Nashville, you have Winnipeg, see, you have all these. Co- see, you're what? saying that, and a lot of other people are saying what? Saying, well, the central is so much easier than the Pacific division. You know, what? what? I didn't say that. No, I said you're the, not saying that. No, but a lot of other people uh-uh. are, and I'm like, I don't know. Who man. the fuck said that? I think Columbus is damn good. I think Carolina's damn good. Fuck. I think Florida and Tampa Bay obviously are good. You know, Florida. They're going to be better. Wait, that's a different division. We're talking no. the Central. Wait, wait. No, so okay, the okay. team... No, oh, then there's a team with the Capitals and the Penguins and all those. But I think most people are saying the most the, the harder division, based on the options like a team like the Blues would have had, either being in the division with Detroit and Chicago and Florida and Columbus and Tampa Bay and you know Detroit, those teams would be an easier division versus going out west... Even though you have Arizona, you have L.A., you have San Jose, you still have the Colorados, you have Vegas, Dallas. you have Dallas. You, so you have Vegas, Dallas, Colorado. Okay. I feel like Dallas is going to take a step back. That's just my... I, you're probably right. That's my feel. Because when you do go that far and you have... Yeah, and then you're you right. lose and they got a... And they got older group. Now the, the long-term assistant coach is now the head coach. I don't know if that always works well, especially when they're an yeah. older coach or whatever. Um, and you know, Here's my your deal. backup goalie got really hot. Here's my deal. You're totally right. Here's my deal. It's a pers- on, on a personal note for you and I, both, Andy, like 930 games fucking suck. Dude. No, they do. They, they fucking do. suck. And if you did Zoom calls after games, which you don't do anymore, which I don't blame you. <laughs> like the Zoom. You'd be, you'd no, be like, up the, like the press conference. The press conference were like, uh, hi, Craig. Um, uh, we have a, what, uh, we have a question what, was from the. Was the puck black tonight? We yeah, have. it was, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Okay, let's go out. We have a question uh, from uh, from the Inquirer Central in St. Louis. Um, 
What did did he wear a left stick or a right stick today? Wear a left. What the fuck you talking and about, the, and, idiot boy? And Chief just has to be so calm. Who's Jesus like so who's awesome. the coolest He's guy in, in the league? And it's my like, why they wear those colored jerseys? Hey, like I, we lost six nothing. You want, dumb I, fuck. I, I, I do want to give a shout out to yeah, Jim yeah. Montgomery today, and love he has, he doesn't even know I'm doing this. I love him. He doesn't know what He's I'm doing. A this fucking man. Today is his one year anniversary of sobriety. Then fucking a. Today is his one year anniversary right. of sobriety, and we all know that can't be easy. It's not easy, Andy. That's got to be easy, so Andy. difficult. And all these listeners that listen, well, let, me, all let, you me just, let me just let me finish. Ahead, and toss right there. That's got to be so difficult, <sighs> baby. And I just want to tell Monty, man, like I, 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 I'm so impressed, like with with him. Always have been, man. Like for him as a hockey person, whatever, just how he carries himself, how he's handling himself right now, because he's not hiding from being one of the guys. He's around. You see him in the, you know, he was in the alumni room last night. Giving, um, get, 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 and, doing and, and guys are hanging out and doing their things. Best, yeah. He doesn't allow it to, nope, to nope, influence nope. him whatsoever. He's a hockey coach. He's at the rink every day. Doug Armstrong pumped his tires about how organized and how yep, uh, prepared he he's been. Yep. You know, you know he's going to fit in great with the team. You know he's going to fit in great with that coaching boys, staff. He's going to be boys. such a strong addition to the coaching staff. But I got to give Monty some serious props. Good call. One year anniversary Good of call. sobriety. And I can't wait for it to be two years. Good for you, and man. And three years and four years and five Andy, years. Andy, I, I, I trip you a lot for a lot of th different reasons. Good, jo good job on that one. We love Monty. Anytime I ask Monty to do anything, he's fucking right there. He'll get a stick sign for a company. Or, mm -hmm. He doesn't even, like, he's just fucking awesome, man. And he doesn't talk about it. And if you do drink in front of him, like, he doesn't, like, he's just, he's doing the right thing. And it's so not easy. And he had a, he's got demons, man. And we all do, especially me. You know that. And I admit it, and I talk about it with everybody. And you guys text message Eric me Brewer every is one of your he's fucking one, he's one stupid of your, nerdy. He's, one of your he's demons. a fucking nerd. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I got my own demons. I'm not worried about him. I got my own shit I got to deal with. But you guys know, though, like Monty, like, man, he got fucked. And he fucked himself, and it was a whirlwind. And now he doesn't drink, and he's sober. Like, you guys got got to give him kudos on that. Mm -hmm. You got to give him kudos on that. Yeah. I love that man. Yeah. I do. Yeah. And I wish I was that strong, to be honest with you. Yeah. I do. Well, not gonna lie to you. you are, and you don't even know it. I am in ways, You got to find that. No, I am in ways. Did you read that story about Mark Parrish before we what get to the interview? What was that about, Andy? So, apparently, like, he he had painkiller addiction. <sighs> yeah. Which is an automatic. Jesus we'll have you on the podcast Christ. for sure. Oh, my God. Are about you about coming we on the podcast? Talk, we got to talk about oh, this. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, so, he had painkiller addiction, which he was able to kick, led into alcoholism. Oh, yeah. That's what happened. And, like, there's a story where, you know, he was... Um, in New Jersey, I guess he was doing the NHL Network, yeah. and I guess he showed up to a production meeting all like you know, like fucked up, and wasted, stuff. or yeah. like on yeah. on something. Well, whatever. I think he was on something. I think he was. Yeah. I think he had been drinking. He was the story really, says every time I see him, he's really good. Oh, he was really good, but you know, he signed a big contract with Minnesota. They bought his ass out. I think that yeah. was when things kind of started, because you know. It's in his hometown where he was like a high school legend, oh, a high school yeah, superstar. Yeah, Probably a little bit embarrassed, man. That's got to be know. difficult. It is. So totally. anyway, um, so Brian Lawton, who was working with him at the NHL Network, and they go way back. I think Lot, I think Lots was his uh, was his agent, and um, it really helped him out. Banging on the hotel, like told him to go home. Like we can't put you on TV tonight, dude. Like look at you. This and and I don't think Mark Parrish was happy about that. Apparently, he got a little defensive. Brian Lawton ends up getting him a Uber to go back to the hotel. And then I guess the breakdown happened the following morning when Brian Lawton confronted him again. Oh, no. They got yeah. the PA involved. They set him up with a treatment facility right away to go straight, like from, from the East Coast, basically to out to Arizona. Why to are we talking facility. about this? So how is this not uh, swoosh under the rug? Why we know, why do we know about because he came out and talked about it right he talked about okay. it okay okay because, he talked about it okay so it wasn't like and Brian it, Lawton okay. talked cool, about cool, it cool, and cool, so cool. so okay, Mike Russo bad. who does a great job covering Fuck, the yeah. the, uh, the Minnesota uh, Wild oh, I thought you said Mike Russo I want to call boy. him the North Stars <laughs> for some reason it's so weird mm -hmm. but the Minnesota Wild and uh, he wrote this story phenomenal a little long I I'm not gonna it was a oh. great story so I can't read it <laughs> <laughs> well well I read like half of it I was like. Read it to me. I was tonight. thirty minutes in. Yeah. I kind of need it oh, on wow. tape. Like it's like a long ass. It's story. on the uh, player. So tribute? I don't know. What, no, it's on his uh, on the athletic. But oh, okay. Roos does a great job writing these stories. 
And I, I got to read the rest of it, you know, like when I have time, like maybe during Christmas break or something. What you were you on the radio today? Because I was for three no, hours before this. What would you stuff. do? I had some other Kid stuff shit. going on. Do you go so, one timers with fucking Ty? I hope so. That's what you're busy with. <laughs> so, um, but but a great story and a great and listen, I, I just I love people who um, are vulnerable and and they're not embarrassed to tell their story because it connects to so many people. I had this dude who I was talking to who listens to the podcast and he's like, man, like when people talk about real shit, it's just like it's, it connects with everybody who's listening because everybody out there is real. Everyone who's like sometimes behind the mic or whatever, they don't want to be real. But in reality, everyone who's listening is real and that's when they connect is when you are real. So a guy like Mark Parrish, he got real there and you know what? People are embracing him like he probably never knew he could yeah. be embraced before. I tell you this, uh, when I first got on radio, and I know we got to, we probably should wind this up here soon because I know we got Tara Raleigh coming up here. But I remember coming on and I tried to be like everybody else, like, oh, I, I'm going to talk X and then it was like, the I, Cardinals I, play I'm, the Padres tonight. I'm first Cam pitch 705. Jansen. I'm a fucking robot. <laughs> and I'm going to be, now I'm like, no, I can't do this. No, I can't do this. No, I can't do this. And I'm like, and that was with like 1,500 people, and they're like, kick it to me about, how's like Duke basketball, Cam? I'm like, what the fuck? Then they, then they like get in trouble for like doing something crazy. No, Cam, we're talking about the basketball game. Like, Cam, oh, did fuck you not all you. Did you read 25 newspapers this Cam, morning? Cam, didn't you watch Duke play last night in a <laughs> basketball game? Like, <laughs> fuck no. Oh, I got to fucking watch Game of Thrones. And for, and for the record, Coach K, I've always liked Coach K and I've always liked Duke basketball, but like now they're losing. And now he's saying that the team they shouldn't shit. play because now they're losing. Don't do that. It makes you look bad. So my point but is, I know what you're saying. My point is, though, and I'm like, no, I'm just going to be myself. And I'm going to read everything, and I'm going to have my own opinion. And I don't know shit about baseball. I don't know shit about fucking basketball. I don't know shit about a lot of things. But I'm going to give you my opinion. I'm going to be goddamn funny. And I'll know the fucking stats because I read my shit. I'm just going to be myself. So if you ask me about fucking Duke fucking basketball and how the point guard fucking scarred a bunch of guys, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about it. I'm going to entertain you, and I'm going to do my own thing. I need my own radio show. And they get me. And that's it. I'm not talking... I, I'm, not, I'm not doing that, and we're just gonna. I'm just gonna be myself, and I, I can pump up other people. And the I college football rankings. Cam, how's the college football rankings going? Well, let me tell you real quick. <laughs> Gonzaga's there. <laughs> fuck off. Hey, what do you think of the starting pitching matchup? Tonight? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't. Okay. My cat puked on my fucking slippers. I got shit fucking going on at home. <laughs> I'm fucking drinking too much. Wherever the fuck is, like, I'll tell my personal story rather than talk about Duke. Who gives a fuck? God uh, bless America. Okay. Well, I know what you do care about. What? That people are protected with their cars. Totally, man. And they're not stuck with crazy, crazy bills during this pandemic and this time of year when that money should go to somebody you love for, for Christmas and the holidays. Yeah. And instead, all of a sudden, your car goes out. My Your computer goes out. Now you have to find money for that. Well, no, you don't. Not if you're protected by Car Shield. Listen up. And the sirens are right now are going to yeah. f- help somebody. There's a Car Shield victim right there. And yeah. the Car Shield's going to hook yeah. them up. Yeah. We're on the way. That's on Cam the- and I. Hi, everyone. That's Cam and I. We're on the way with the Car I, Shield protection don't plan. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. For as low as $99 a month. I think even less than that. I just put my You mentioned on. the promo code CAM. I know it's tough. I know it's, it's kind of sexy. It's not easy. Let's be honest You'll save 10%. You might, you Mention the promo laid. code CAM. You'll save 10%. You might get laid. So check this out. Customize the plan that you want it, uh, the way you want it. You want it long, it can be long. You want it short? I want it long and girthy, if possible. And they could do that for you. Yes, they can. Yeah. And if you want a short-term deal, hey, customize it the way that you want it. 800-857-2481. 800-857-2481. Carshield.com. Call them today. How about Bud Light? Seltzer baby. Seltzer. What says the holiday season like an ugly Christmas sweater pack? Sh- Dude, you could mix and match these these uh, Bud Light seltzers, by the way. I want the Cam and Strick Christmas cocktail oh, recipes. Be bad ass. Have you put those together it, yet? It's called Sizzurp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but how do you make it? it don't you use don't little, do it if you have kids. You can use some strawberry, yeah. black cherry, lemon, lime, or mango. Mango. <coughs> Excuse, can we cut, edit that? Mango baby, and here's the deal: like the Christmas stuff, though. Honestly, like you can mix and match different things. Like if you have that, if you get the 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 assortment of all the the variety pack, the variety pack, and you lay it out, like when you have a Christmas party, people are like, "Fucking right, you guys are classy." 
you guys have, must have a lot of money and I, stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, They're like, whoa, wow. are you rich? You have wow. a variety pack. We're in pack. Franklin County, but we feel like we're in West County. Oh, What's my going God. On here? You have a variety pack? You have a variety pack? I can mix and match shit. Like, I love all Did y'all. Did you hear Cam and Kate had a variety pack at their Christmas Did you hear about party? Cam and Kate's party. And they're moving to St. Albans, They're and really they have variety packs. They're what, fucking wealthy. How much money is he making from the Camastrick podcast? I mean, <laughs> Kate's parents have money. No, I'm sure they don't. But the point is, he's oh got a variety pack. You should see the neighbors come over to my. He parents. even had pineapple. Then they, we did the inspection the other day, and the uh, the neighbors came over to my my, my who wife, your aunt, my wife's parents, and they come over and they're like, "Congratulations!" And my wife's parents are like, uh, "We didn't buy this." Like, who did? And they look at Kate, and Kate looks like she's 25 years old, and they're like. Oh well, well, oh, oh, well, oh, well, well hello. How, how old are you? She's like, well, I'm thirty. Well, well how, how'd you do this? How, how'd you do? I, I'm confused. <laughs> Sit down, woman. I should have bought this five years ago, but I got addicted to painkillers and I spent like a half a million dollars. <laughs> so get on with just so. Okay. Um. So yeah, you can get the variety pack. You can also get the limited edition ugly Christmas sweater pack. Yeah. Get it and get it today. Happy holidays to everybody. Less than one percent alcohol. Uh, less than 100 calories yeah. and a 5% alcohol, I should say. <laughs> less than one, you per- say? Less than one gram of sugar. Yeah, what'd you say 5% earlier? alcohol. I said Jeez. less than 1% alcohol. No. It's less than 5% alcohol. No, 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 no. no. You're getting a little buzz on. I may loaded. leave one of these out for the reindeer, too. Good for you. Okay. Tell me a little Santa. Okay. Less little buzz Leave him on. some Bud Light seltzer. Santa loves this shit. You know that. Santa's not, he, yeah, he drinks. Oh, he does. I know he does. So we go every year to uh, this... I take my kids every year. We're not going this year because of, like, COVID. 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 It's like ruining the tradition. It's kind of sad. But it a lot we of go to this me. thing, and, like, Santa's there. We're on a train, and, like, you go to the North Pole and everything. And Santa is, like, shit-faced every year. Oh, oh really? He's just bombed. <laughs> just <laughs> absolutely touchy bombed. touchy-feely bomb, too? He's not too touchy. Certainly wouldn't be this year. The Santa with the mask, a little weird, get out, man. Get it's out a little here. weird. You already got a mask on anyway. Like Santa, fuck you, fucking kidding. You can't like tell us. Like, I already heard Santa can't get COVID anyway. Yeah, he's like he's special. immune to it. Yeah. Yet they have him with mask on at every mall in yeah, America. Don't fuck Santa don't over. Don't fuck it over. He doesn't yeah. need a mask. No. Put the kid has. He's a, immune. Yeah. Thank you. He's a like a <laughs> he god. He doesn't get COVID. Isn't he spiritual? Like what the fuck? He's magical. I'm religious. I know he's magical. He yeah. can't. He can't get no COVID. I mean, so anyway, I, I don't know. I, I don't yeah, know what the either. people it's don't even get it. But I understand it's tough for the Santas out there this time of year. Have a little Bud Light seltzer. Yeah, I know one that certainly does. He gets hammered. I don't know. I don't know what he's really? drinking. Oh my god, he's so yeah, shit. Every, <laughs> every year, every um, year. All right. So that guy we were talking about at the Blues game. That's what you find at the car dealerships. You don't find that at Bellman. Bellman dot com. B e h l m a n n dot com. Best customer service you'll find anywhere. Hey, check them out in Troy, Missouri. Is that close to St. Albans? Do you even know? You, um, you should know that. I think it's very close. Doesn't matter. No, no. I'll drive out no. there anyway. I mean, we'll go there anyway. <laughs> Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram on one side of the street. The other side is the uh, Cadillac, Buick, GMC. Check out their website. Check out the inventory. If you have a used car and you're like, I think we need to look to tr- uh, trade this in. Maybe sell it. Yeah. Yeah. And your wife is like, well, who wants that? I know who does. Yeah. Bellman Dan will buy it. Dan Bellman, baby. Dan was, Dan's like, I can do Dan's something like, with this. Mug. Give me that mug. Dan dude. can make you know what out of you know what. Like, how does it go? No, I don't chicken, know. Chicken, like. Chicken shit out of chicken shit? Or out of chicken no. salad. Yeah. Out of yeah. Sh- yeah. Well, salad. Well, he can do that out of chicken Out shit. of a chef salad, a chicken shit? Yeah, yeah. Well, he can do that. Whatever. He can do that. Bellman.com. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Check it out. Get that done today. All right, you know we keep it handsome, not just during the holidays, but really every day. We smell good, we look good. I mean, I, I don't know about that, but and I'm t- no, I do. I smell. So. You, I, I use the beard moisturizer. Fresh. I use the head balm this morning on my don't hair. Don't waste your beard moisturizer on your non beard. No, because I use it as like an aftershave after I shave too. Yeah, but you don't need a shave because you don't have a beard. I so sh- don't waste it. <laughs> No, Ty has a bigger beard than you, homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. He's going to grow a beard before I do. Hey, well, he looks like me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm man. obsessed with him. I don't I know. know why. No, he's okay. cool. He's so cool. Oh, my God. But anyway, um, so check that out. All the Keep It Handsome products, man. I'll tell you what. We got a uh, message yesterday, Cam and I, from yeah. somebody who um, who just got their fire ugly hoodie in the mail. Man, it made me feel so good that people are supporting the cause, supporting yeah, the Montreal man. Resource I Center, yep. supporting our efforts to eliminate the bullies and the ugly that exists that's out there. Yep. yep and yep. we can all do it, man, if we all contribute. Get your Fight Ugly hoodie today. Go to keepithandsome.com. Mention the promo code Cam and Strick. You're going to save 15%. You can also buy it off of Amazon, dude. Amazon yeah. has everything, including Keep It Handsome hoodies, the Fight Ugly hoodies. So check it out. Get it for that special someone in your life. 
before the Christmas season. And it's cool. And, and anytime you wear a fight ugly anywhere, people are like, what does that mean? You just like, fuck, I, I, I'm anti-bully, man. So don't fucking bully I'm anti-ugly. I'm anti-ugly. No, I'm anti-bully. And then like, don't be fucking ugly whenever you are anti-bully. You got to keep it handsome when you're anti-bully, meaning you can't like curb stomp a guy. It gets you people's <laughs> attention too because they're kind of like, what does your shirt mean? No, I'll tell you Do what you the fight fuck a lot? means. I'm like, no, no I pick, I'm fighting bullies. I stick and they're up like, for people. Oh. You fuck. I stick up for fucking bullies. Yeah. Don't fucking bully. You're not bullying me, homie. Mm -hmm. You're bullying like this little kid over here that doesn't have any confidence, mm -hmm. and I don't fucking like that. Yeah. So now I got to step in. Don't fuck with me on yes. this. Yeah. No, I got pissed call. on when I was fucking seven. Yeah. I ain't happening no more unless I want it, which I usually don't, Jamie. Mm -hmm. My in engineer's looking at me like you're a psycho, but sometimes it's kind of cute when you're partying. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay. I stuck up for myself. Terry O'Reilly. Yeah. Are you done antique shopping? <laughs> no shit. <laughs> What did he's you find today? Shock. And even Wire John Wentz, it's like he's been shopping for antiques for like years. He's into <laughs> it, man. I, it's like when you get it inside your soul, you just can't shake it. You can't get rid of if it. If Terry Riley does it, it's fine. If Eric yeah. Brewer does it, he's a nerd. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, he's episode number me. 98. He's going to kill Terry me. Terry O'Reilly. Did he have a ah, nickname? That. Everyone had a nickname back then. I'm Tasmanian like, Devil, baby. Podcast. Let's go. Let's go. Have a listen. Terry. Terry. <laughs> How you doing? You got? Are you, are you driving or is your wife driving now? My wife's driving. That's the way to do it. That's how Cam does that's it too. That's how I do it. Cam doesn't drive. Cam's wife drives him around everywhere. Yeah. So I that just, that's the way to I go, get, Terry. I heard directions, you know. So. <laughs> Veteran yeah. move. What are you doing now? Like, how are you? Everything good with you? Are you just you're cruising around, driving from one place to the next, or what? Well, we. Uh, well, I'm I'm 69, so we're trying to trying to retire. It hasn't stuck yet. Uh, but, uh, we recently bought a home down in, uh, Fort Myers about four years ago, uh, five, five years ago. And, uh, we're, we're down, we're down here for a couple of weeks. We'll come back after Christmas, uh, probably early February for two or three months. So it's, it's nice, uh, getting tired of the cold, uh, snowy, icy winters up North. Oh, I don't blame you. I'm guessing you're driving probably a big pickup truck. I could I could picture you driving a pickup truck. And when you do live down in Florida, are you a fisherman? You got boats? Like, what's your kind of go to down there? Well, we we're we're in a Ford 150. Uh, we yeah. use we use use it to drag our uh, Airstream trailer, and because uh, we we travel with it, our dogs. We've got uh, five long haired dachshunds, uh, so we we don't fly anywhere. We just jump in the truck with the dogs and hit the road uh once i get down to florida uh i i do have fishing equipment and we've got a pontoon boat uh if my son comes down i'll go out with him uh and throw a line in the water but uh other than that we do a lot of bike riding and uh i'm slowly setting up a little workshop hobby shop in one of the garages down here so uh, i can fiddle with old projects that's what you do. Hey, That's hey, what you do right hey, there, Andy. Don't do what I did and hire someone to drive your pontoon. Yeah, on a, okay? on a pond. I mean, that's I made that mistake. People give me crap about it all the time now, Terry. So, Pontoons are so very easy to drive, Andy. Let, let your son drive that for you or whoever's, whoever's visiting at the time. So you said you have five dogs. Yeah, like, like how do you decide? I, to, how do you decide to get the third dog, the fourth dog, and the fifth dog? I mean, you must love your puppies. Well, uh, just don't go away. If your wife likes dogs, don't go away. Like, when you come home. <laughs> I, I, you have to, you have to listen to this. You won't believe it. I, our plan was to have two dogs. We, uh, we, we agreed on it. We discussed it. I thought it was a nice way to travel with one dog each on leash. And we went up to a kennel in Massachusetts and picked out two siblings, two male dogs, uh, and out of a litter of six, uh, that left one unsold. And my wife convinced me the next day to, to buy that one as well so now we're up to three and, and then i went to uh oh and then we we uh babysat one of the other siblings for a couple of weeks uh and the family decided to give it up so we were up to four and then then we i went on a trip to uh, ontario uh, a neighbor passed away so i drove up to oshawa i went to the funeral and i came back got in the elevator went up to the fifth floor of the my uh, condo building and the elevator doors opened and there were 14 more dachshunds running around. Oh, my God. So my my wife had gotten involved in a rescue. Uh, the, the, the kennel where we bought our dogs, 
uh, had sort of slipped in uh, into disrespair, uh, and and uh, somebody called the police. So they showed up and took eighty dogs out of this kennel, and wow. uh, my wife my wife got involved and uh, picked up fourteen of them and brought them home. Uh, and and then she got on the phone and the internet and started finding homes for them all. But they they were with us for a few days. It was quite a quite a scene to see all those little wiener dogs running around. Yeah, but, they're scary, aren't they? No one's robbing yeah. your house. Well, when you talk about these <laughs> yeah. dots, oh, no. I mean, yeah. how much do they weigh? Like each one? They're like, yeah, uh, tiny. Oh, uh, under twenty pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, I, can you can you send us a picture? I would love to see you with all five dogs laying in bed doing your thing. And you know, it, it's so funny that you keep bringing your wife up. I, I completely understand that. Like anytime there's the holidays, Andy, we talked about this the other day. When you have the the commercial on TV where the show's the dog shelter and there's a really sad song and you're like, okay, honey, get my credit card. No, we've all been <laughs> oh, yeah. there, my man. Yeah, we get yeah, it. Yeah. So um, she, she wants to she wants to get one more so we can train them for the Iditarod thing up in Alaska. So. Ooh, you know, I've actually done that. I've actually been on a sled pulled by 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 those huskies back in the day in Alaska. Are they oh, okay. Malamutes? Are right. they Malamutes or huskies? But I was there, yeah, man. Huskies, I, I, yeah. I've done it, you oh, know. Yeah. I think yeah. you should do uh, it. Uh, I think my uh, dachshunds will blow them away. Yeah, yeah they, they probably well, they will. They can pull Andy, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess so. So now you're heading up to Massachusetts. Like, what's what goes on uh, when you go up there? Like, uh, you find yourself busy, people pulling you in all different directions. Like, do you have to become uh, like Terry O'Reilly, yeah. the hockey player, when you're up there, and maybe you can hide and and and, and you know oh, turn oh, it down no, when I'm, you're in Florida? Yeah, no, I'm. You know, it's it's been a while since I played and coached, so it, uh, I've got a relatively quiet life up there. I still have, uh, after I got out of coaching in 1988-89, uh, it, it was my last uh, season with the Bruins, I uh, got into uh, commercial real estate. So I still have uh, four or five pieces of property up in New England that I have to manage. Uh, so I'll, we'll go back for a couple months, December and January, and and uh, make sure everything's buttoned up and then come back down here for a little more, you know, and eventually I, I'm going to sell everything and, uh, and just completely retire. So. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah, about. I'm going to remind you, you 10 should. years from now, by the way, no, that you know. said that, Terry. You said you're you going to retire. And 10 years from now, you're going to tell me you bought another condo building <laughs> or something, you know? So, you know, I know I know how it goes. It gets a little addictive. So, listen, tell us your story. You grew up where? What was life like with you, uh, you know, growing up back in the day? Like, how much hockey did you play? Like, how did you uh, all of a sudden evolve into, a, uh, into an NHL player? Well, I... Uh, Started in uh, Oshawa, Ontario. Uh, you know where Oshawa is. It's just east oh, of yeah. Toronto, about 30 miles on the north shore of Lake Ontario. Uh, my family was uh, uh, members of uh, St. Gertrude's Parish. Uh, we went to St. Gertrude's Elementary School. And uh, there was a six-team uh, parish uh, hockey league. Uh, and I, I played for St. Gertrude's. I started out as a uh, goaltender and played played goalie for three or four years so i enjoyed that but then i started to get bored uh wanted to play forward but the, nobody wanted to go in the net full time so i found myself alternating uh i played goalie one sunday and then forward the next sunday and it was like that and then the i think into the fifth year i started skating as a forward so i didn't start skating as a forward till i was probably 12 or 13 and I turned pro when I was 19 so that's my that's my excuse for the way I skated oh we, I, I sort of ran down the ice <laughs> <laughs> you ran over people when those jackhammer left started coming in the mix like when did you Terry when did you realize that okay I'm tough this is my game this is gonna be my personality on the ice like when did that start coming puberty well no I think I think it was just the way it was. I, I had, uh, there were five O'Reilly boys. Three of them were older than me. Uh, they were always organizing a uh, touch football game or a street hockey game, and they always needed more bodies. So I had the good fortune of being invited to play street hockey, touch football, soccer, any, any game that there was. I was invited to play with bigger, older, young men 
and uh, it forced me to to uh, you know buck it up and 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 stand up to some of them. You know, you, you know when you're a couple years younger than uh, guys at that age, you can get pushed around if mm-hmm. you let them. And and uh, so plus there was the occasional free for all in the Riley House. You know, with all that many boys. So. <laughs> God, what was so that I didn't like? think I didn't think anything of it uh, with mixing it up and uh, let's face it that's the way the NHL was back then. Uh, it, you, I, I actually have some minutes and penalties uh, that were not deserved. I'll, I'll give you two examples. Uh, we were in Philadelphia in the Spectrum. Uh, Schultz had the puck. He's he's going behind his net and he's going to come up the left boards. I got in as the first four checker uh, and gave him a shoulder check and the puck squeezed out in front. I reached out. Now I've got the puck on my stick and my centerman, Peter McNabb, is coming into the high slot. I'm going to throw him a backhand pass. Well, Schultz, dropped his gloves and grabbed me by the shoulders from behind, pushed me up against the glass and started throwing punches. Well, I've still got my gloves on. I'm still holding my stick with two hands and the puck is actually touching my stick as I'm pressed up against the boards. The whistle's gone. The linesmen get in quickly, separate us, and the referee looks at the two of us, points at the two of us, and says, five minutes each. Mm. Okay? Now, if you want to take the time, you can look up that little piece of videotape. I forget what year it was, but I had my gloves on. I had my stick. I had possession of the puck. I didn't throw one punch. I received about half a dozen in the back of the head, and I got a five-minute major. So, Well, we're going to say you had 2,090 yeah. penalty minutes, not 2,095 over the course of your yeah. career. We're taking five it's, off. We're okay. taking five it's, off. All right. So We've that all, explains yeah. five. How much time do you guys have? Oh, we got plenty <laughs> we got of time. time. And so do you. The Cam and Strick Podcast is brought to you by Car Shield. You know, nothing more frustrating, Cam, than when that engine light comes on, and you know right off the bat – you're going to have to spend thousands oh. of dollars <gasps> to repair your vehicle. Call 800-857-2481. Mention the promo code CAM mm. or visit carshield.com and use the code CAM to save 10%. Yeah. That's carshield.com. A deductible may apply. Save yourself money. Cam. Sign up and get your coverage now Cam. with carshield.com. Cam. Now back to Cam. the interview. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here, one more. One more. This is a ten-minute misconduct. Yeah. I had a. I hit Schultz with a shoulder check in the spectrum. Uh, he went up in the air, fell down, and bumped his head on the ice, and he was out cold. So the trainer came out to give him some sniffers. The trainer gave me two minutes for charging, and I went and sat in the penalty box. After after the trainer woke Schultz up and told him what happened, he got up and came charging over to the penalty box with his stick over his head. Uh, and I stood up and held my stick with my two hands across to block his stick if he if he tried to hit me. Mm-hmm. The, li- the linesman came in, grabbed him, and shuffled him into his penalty box. The referee came by and said, he pointed at the two of us and said, 10 minutes each. Now, here, I'm sitting in the penalty box, and Schultz is attacking me. I, I didn't hit him. I stood there and put the stick up in front of me to protect myself. But I didn't do anything other than that, and I got 10 minutes for it, sitting in the penalty box. How so now, what are we down to? We're down to 2080? Well, now we're, we're, we're only well, taking five off of that. Now we're at 2080. We're only yeah. taking five off of that one now. How many yeah, times did you get away with murder on the ice, though, and you didn't get a penalty? So we got to tack on a uh, lot more. Uh, come on now, oh, right? <laughs> oh, come on. I'm, I'm trying to get them down. You're not helping at all. <laughs> oh, I love it. And it's so weird. Like, God, I just, you know, we always do this, and. We, Andy and I always brainstorm on who we went next, and of course, so your name got brought up. Like, oh my God, yes! And and we do our world class research on you, and of course, that just means look you up on YouTube and and stuff like that. I mean, you watch the game now and how fast it is, but you were you didn't have a helmet on, and I'm watching you go 100 miles an hour into the corners, and sometimes you could blow a tire and you hit the boards, and I, I don't know how many times I fell into the boards, and you just you hit your head off the ice, but the, the helmet's there. Like, just explain that. And do you look back on that and say, God, is that crazy? Yeah, well, it was crazy. I look back at it. But if you look back at uh, videotapes of games in the 60s and the 70s, when when I was growing up in Oshawa, uh, my team was the Toronto Maple Leafs. We would watch 
Foster Hewitt hockey night in Canada every Saturday. And you'd watch guys like uh, Frank Mahovlich and uh, uh, Dave Keon on, and uh, uh, Bobby Bond on defense. Uh, Stan Nikita in Chicago, Jean Rattel in New York. They didn't wear helmets. And, and they never raised their sticks above their waist. It was it's just the way they played the game. Their sticks were down low uh, on the ice, and it was just a, a matter of respect, I think, that kind of dissipated over the next couple of decades. Uh, and now, you know, the contact, the, the players have become bigger, stronger, and faster, and the, contract, the contact, if you're not properly equipped, can be devastating, so... I, I, if I played in the today's league, I definitely would wear a helmet, and probably because it's a rule. But. Well, you do have a thick head of hair, though, so you probably, that probably helped you on let, many let, occasions. Let that hair show off I there, know, Terry. Man. We know what you were doing. Oh, Saturday I, night, you're like, let, 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 go. let them all see my hair. We don't need a bucket. Hey, but um, yeah. you're a young kid. You walk into that Boston Bruins dressing room. Like, I can only imagine what it's like. Like You've got you know all these superstar Hall of Fame legends. I mean, legit, yeah. legitimate legends in the dressing room. Were you uncomfortable? Were you scared? Like, What was that moment like for you? Well, I was very, very nervous. They, they, keep in mind, I, I got drafted in uh, 71. Uh, they had just won the Stanley Cup in uh, the 70, 71 se- season. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they lost it the next year. Then they won it again against New York. Uh, and uh, I... I just didn't expect to make their NHL team. I, I thought that I'd be uh, buried in the minors for some time. Uh, and that was a consideration when I decided to sign a contract with them because I'd been offered a, a full scholarship to, you know, where St. Louis, uh, St. Louis, St. Louis university, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Billikens. Is that what yeah, they're called yeah. They used to have yeah. a D one team. A bunch of Canadians come, came down for that. Yeah, I was offered a four-year full scholarship, and uh, I I told the uh, the scout that was scouting me for the Bruins, uh, they 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 drafted me, and he called me up, and uh, I said, "Listen, I've been offered a full scholarship to St. Louis. That's worth about twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars back then." And I, I said, "Is there any guarantee if I, you know?" If I uh, don't make the team, or I'm going to be playing for twelve or thirteen thousand dollars a year in the minors, and uh, he said, "Well, let me make a phone call." And he got back to me, and he said, uh, "We'll give you a twenty-five thousand dollar signing bonus," which basically was a four-year scholarship. So it it, it made it. And then I called I called St. Louis uh, and asked them, you know, the scholarship. What happens if I get injured? Uh, if I blow out a knee? Uh, in the first or second year. He said, oh, that won't happen. I said, well, you know, humor me. What happens if it does happen? Hmm. And and they said, well, we'd have to prorate your scholarship. And I said, well, you know, I'm one of five boys in a, in a family. Uh, my father is a milkman. We don't have the kind of money to let alone travel to St. Louis and back, let alone pay any tuition. So uh, I'm going to have to... Uh, Accept the Boston offer, so that's what I did. Hey, listen, we know a pretty good. Uh, we, we know one or two people here in St. Louis. We're going to get you that honorary degree, we are. the and honorary not, degree from St. Louis University, minutes. and we're giving you twenty five thousand dollars too. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> podcast is doing yeah. great. Well, seventy one draft. Okay, so you're nine. You're nineteen going into training camp. Now I'm thinking of other big tough guys that came in at a young age, and and one comes to mind: Wendell Clark coming in at eighteen, going toe to toe, doing his thing. Who woke you up when you started playing? Meaning. I know you and Schultz had some some uh, toe-to-toe battles, but when you're 19 years old, you're cruising around. Like, did somebody did you did you take an ass kicking off the bat and you're like, oh, okay, now I'm going against yeah. grown men? Like, explain that. Well, it happened actually against one of my own teammates. Uh, I was at I was at that first training camp. Uh, these guys had just won the Stanley Cup. They were a pretty tight group, and we were having a uh, inner squad scrimmage. And I was the ugly duckling out there. I was going 90 miles an hour trying to make the team. And they're all, you know, just they're all comfortable. They know they're on the team. They're they're taking it easy a little bit. And uh, I was 
forechecking on Johnny McKenzie, and he came up with an elbow right under the jaw, and, you know, I had tears in my eyes. It. But, you know, he's kind of on the small side, and you know, I didn't want to tangle with him. And now I'm chasing down Bobby Orr, and pretty much the same thing happened. I, I, I was in close on him for checking and he just came back with an elbow and caught me in the jaw and I certainly wasn't going to take any offense from Bobby Orr and later in the scrimmage I oh I had one more altercation I had with Teddy Green and he turned around he was going to give me a two-hander with his stick so I stayed away from him and then later in the scrimmage I fell down along the boards as the play was reversing going back into the other end and as I was getting up, I was I was on my stomach. I, I got onto my knees and I was getting up. And Carol Vadney came along and cross-checked me on the back of the neck and sent me face first back into the ice as just as he was going by, you know, for for no reason at all. Uh, and and that lit me up. I, you know, he by the time I got up, he was back in the other end in front of the net defending, and I got up in full steam raced right down and just went right into him, carried him right into the uh, net and and had a, a quick uh, fisticuff in the net until everybody pried me off of him. Uh, but I, I think it it woke everybody else up. They realized that they can't push me too far and things settled down after that. I love it. I Left love it. Heat. Now they know. Now they know. So did you like fighting? Is it something that you enjoyed doing? Like, did the organization tell you we need you to be this guy? Like, how did that evolve in terms of, you know, how you, um, you know, had so many fighting majors and, and really made it, you know, a big part of your of your game? Well, I, I didn't think I could depend on my smooth skating and stick handling skills right off the bat. I know about that. <laughs> yeah, Cam knows know. about that. <laughs> it's all good. No, I, I, it, was, it was just a natural, you know, when you grow up with five boys in a family and you're playing street hockey, flag football, soccer with, with older guys, you, you just learn how to defend yourself and play tough and, and uh, respond to any attempts at bullying. And, and that was in my nature. So uh, I have to be thankful to my older brothers for that. Yeah, no, absolutely. But you got it. Just the, the left jackhammers. I mean, we're, it's so fun looking some uh, of your old clips up. And, you know, you're going against guys, again, like the, the Dave Schultz and, and the big Ben Wilson. But back then, you'll get into a fight, though, and then all of a sudden everybody else is in the mix. And everybody's, you know, everybody's in on it. And guys are falling on each other and stepping on each other's hands. And, like, it's just – it's it's goddamn chaos. And the linesmen oh, yeah. and the refs, they came and control it. Like, some of those games must have been five hours long just because of that. Yeah, yeah, and it was crazy. I, I remember a funny incident in uh, Ottawa, Ontario. I was playing for the Generals, and uh, there was a uh, brawl on the ice. Both teams, everybody's on the ice brawling. And it was starting to quiet down, and I, I, I'm tangled up with uh, one of the Ottawa players, and we're watching what's going on. One of his teammates had fallen down against the boards, and – and uh, his face was very much near uh, the skates of two other players that were grappling along the boards. They were backing up towards his face, so you could see these skates getting closer and closer to his face. And I said, I said to the Ottawa player, I said, your buddy's going to get stepped on. And I said, let's move over there. So we moved over, and I still had my left glove on. I reached in and put my hand on his face with the gloves so that it couldn't get damaged by his skate. So now while I'm stretched out like this, another Ottawa player came along and just drilled me. <laughs> just, and the guy that that I was holding on to said, no, 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 he's, he's helping one of our guys. <laughs> so it was, it was the funniest exchange except for the punch in the mouth. Hey, let's talk about the new Bud Light Seltzer. Oh, yeah. It's an easy-drinking hard seltzer that comes in four delicious fruit flavors. Mm. Black cherry, Ooh. strawberry, yes. lemon lime, and Cam's favorite, mango. Oh, With mango. With only 100 calories, 5% alcohol, and less than a gram of sugar, mm -hmm. you might as well have a few tonight or this weekend. Mm. Go to BudLight.com to buy Bud Light Seltzer online. Must be 21 years of age or older. Bud Light Seltzer unquestionably good yeah 
Now back to the interview. Did did anybody ever scare you? Like as you evolved throughout your career, that just had your number, and that that you shied away from, or was there nobody that could do that to you? Well, there's a guy. I think he lives in your area. Oh yeah, uh, oh, we know a guy him. named John Winston. <laughs> I talked to okay. Wire this morning. He gave me all the scoops yeah. about oh, you. Yeah, he's yeah, he's yeah. herding well, cattle right now down at his ranch. <laughs> well, I'm 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 getting paid twenty five dollars to blow a little smoke right now. So let me don't interrupt me, okay? John John was probably be the one of the toughest scariest guys in the nhl but he was my teammate thank goodness so <laughs> god yeah but he told me a story how uh when you guys were playing on different teams when he went to quebec yep. and and i mean there were situations that would go down in the game but you guys kind of almost had a pact with one another that that you would not fight one another on the ice and you even went down to the wives room after the game to tell his wife that like tell us that story <laughs> Well, when when John came to Boston, uh, Don Cherry called him up after we had had a road trip. Uh, well, I I had missed a, go, a couple of games because of the flu, and uh, we we got pushed around uh, in St. Louis, and that really upset Don Cherry. So he insisted on calling up John, and by the time we got out to L.A., John was there, and that was the beginning of his career in uh, with the Boston Bruins. And when we finished that road trip, I showed John around the Boston area when Rhonda flew in and I helped them locate an apartment for the rest of the season. And they shortly after that had their first child, uh, daughter, Jacqueline, and, and they asked me to be the godfather. And uh, I thought that was a, a very nice thing and a wonderful thing because I didn't think that Rhonda would allow John to beat up jackie's godfather even if he got traded so <laughs> that was that was the deal you're not allowed to beat up the godfather <laughs> god that's because he he's a he's bigger guy and his hands are so big too when he walks in the locker room he skates with us still with the alumni hey, but but, oh, he, yeah. but he tells he's a, a story though, though how the the coach kind of like tapped him on the shoulder he hopped over the boards and he essentially whispered in your ear, right? Like, I guess you would yeah. cross-check somebody. Uh -oh. And he whispered in your ear that, hey, we're not going to do this. You're not going to do this. You can get him at the end of the game. You can have him, whatever. But then yeah. what, what yeah. led to you taking your skates off and walking down and talking to Rhonda in the wives' room after the game? What? I didn't hear that last part. Yeah, what, well, he, he's, the way he says it, he tells a story that after the game you took your skates off and you yeah. walked down to the wives' room and you told Rhonda – me and John, oh, yeah, we will yeah. never ever fight on yeah. the ice. Aww. Yeah, no, I, I did, I did tell Rhonda that she didn't have to worry about that. You know, I mean, that's, you know, it was just something that I promised her. You know, you know, I had no, I, there's no way I could get angry at John. He, he's, he's one of the nicest, most gentle guys, unless you cross him. And uh, I, I just had no intention of getting in and scrap with him. There, there, there were enough other guys in the league that to tangle with well he cut me from tv uh, uh peewee quebec so i did get angry with him at the age of 12 <laughs> but i didn't do anything about it just so you know uh, <laughs> i want to get into great guy and again he still skates with us and he has that big farm down south in southern missouri and he has all the alumni guys out there we love him to death but i was going to ask you about that the infamous brawl of course in msg and uh, stan jonathan who's another just a little badass throws left just like you you guys had the, like, the toughest teams ever but a fan comes across and punches him, steals his stick, does this, does that. You guys jump over the glass. You're stepping on concrete. You're going crazy. You only get eight games for this whole thing. Although I don't think you punch anybody. You know, just chaos going on. I mean, do you ever look back at that and say, I mean, obviously this will never happen again. But, wow, those are some wild, wild, wild west times in the NHL. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. You have to keep in mind the sidewall glass at Madison Square Garden was only two feet high. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the game was over. We were leaving the ice. Uh, Stan was up against that wall with a Ranger player with a little scuffle, but it was going nowhere. It was December 23rd. We had a charter plane at the airport with food and we had three days off for Christmas. We wanted, we had just won the game. We wanted out of town. Uh, the Rangers, they were a little frustrated because they'd lost. Uh, and when, during that scuffle, this big, drunk ranger fan reached over and just drilled stan 
and uh i i saw it happen and uh I just was, oh, wait, and then he grabbed his stick and started swinging it. I think you've probably seen that on video. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I just didn't want this guy to, to be able to disappear into the crowd after hitting Stan and stealing his stick. So I, I put my foot on the dasher and over, over and grabbed him, and I held him until the, the police came along and arrested him. But in the meantime, uh, he had a brother and some friends, and they were giving me a, a pretty good beating, and I think that's why – the rest of my teammates came over uh, to make sure that uh, I was protected. So, I, it, you know, it uh, really blew into something uh, that it didn't have to be. And, and you're right, it will never happen again. The, the, a funny detail about that is uh, years later, my younger brother is a, a, an architect that specializes in sports facilities. And his firm out of Toronto, BB&B out of Toronto, had the contract to renovate Madison Square Garden. So I have some emails uh, between he and I. Uh, I. I'm acting as a consultant, and uh, my little brother writes to me saying, I care, I think you're right. I think the sidewall glass has to be six or eight feet tall uh, all the way around the, the boards. So that's my contribution to <laughs> Madison Square Garden and the NHL, the tall glass that you see. You know, yeah. it saves lives. Yeah. Well, now yeah. you're, now you're yeah. not you're not going to be able to reach over and grab a grab a player. We all know that. Right. I think yeah. it was Al yeah. Secor that tripped somebody up, and then it all Secor. became just craziness. But Milbury in the stands beating somebody up with a shoe. He he grabbed the guy's shoe and started hitting him with his own shoe, or what? Well, the guy was was one of the group hitting me. Uh, well, I was holding on to the guy that hit Stan. Okay, so guy hit Stan. I grab him bunch of other guys start hitting me my guys start chasing them away uh and this fellow ran up to another section mike is on his tail and the guy fell over a seat and kicked at mike with and he had a, one of those slip-on loafers <laughs> and mike put his hand up to block the the kick and he caught this the foot and then the guy put, withdrew his foot and the shoe stayed so mike used it to beat him with his own shoe so. <laughs> his loafer nonetheless too how, nerdy how, loafer yeah. how was milbury as a yeah. as a teammate we like we see him on tv now he obviously is a is that you either love him or you hate him or maybe somewhere in between but is he the guy he always was like what's your take on what you see now from him on television well say that again you're asking about mike yeah, yeah. mike milbury like was he always you know people either love him or hate him like what's your take on on him in terms of what you see now uh watching him on tv and, and how he was as a teammate uh, he's, you know, Mike is, is a smart guy. Uh, and he, I, I think when he does the TV, uh, work, the analytical work, I think he has taken on a persona of being, being tough and, and, uh, sometimes very critical. And, and I think that's a choice that he made. Uh, but as a teammate, and I think he also, coached that way you know he he drove the players hard uh uh he could be very critical to some of the better players in the dressing room uh with the theory that that'll trickle down to everybody you know in fact uh, you know it's it's not an unusual technique i actually had ray bork when i was coaching he came up to me once and said terry you can you can criticize me you know uh, if you criticize me, it'll get the attention of everybody else, uh, and I can take it. And I said, Ray, I appreciate that, but there's nothing to crit- criticize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you but shoot you too hard, Ray. What, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You understand the meeting. There, there's some coaches that they 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 have four or five top players that they never say a peep about them, and you know, some players think, well, gee, that's not really fair, but. Uh, you know, that's life. Uh, Mike, I think, treated everybody the same, and and he, he could be tough. So, and, but, you know, he had some success. He took the team to the Stanley Cup Finals, I think, uh, two years after uh, uh, we went to the finals uh, with me as the head coach, both against uh, Edmonton Oilers oh. and uh, both when the Oilers were in their prime. So we didn't fare too well. What about Don Cherry as a coach? Like, could he, was there any part of him that could be a player's coach? Like, did did you guys interact with him? 
or was it all business at all times? Oh no, he was he was a player coach all the way. Yeah, no, he he was just a wonderful guy. You know, he he uh, he really he really understood the rhythm of the game of the season uh, because he played. He'd played many years in the minors, and he knew what it was like to travel on the bus and and be tired and and play back to back games and and play through uh, minor injuries and you know he he understood it all and uh and you could tell that the way he talked to the players and the way he dealt with us and uh i i loved the guy i loved the to this day i love the guy he was he was a great coach time to talk about our boy dan bellman bellman.com that's with two n's not one b e h l m a n n dot com hey check out the new inventory check out the pre-owned vehicles you looking for a chrysler a dodge a jeep or ram how about a cadillac or a buick gmc all in troy missouri get your new wheels in time for the winter mm, 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 mm. now back to the interview we love him too. He came on the podcast as well, and you know he's just an honest guy. I'd love to play for him, to be completely honest with you. But let me talk about yeah. you in your prime. Again, you're a young kid. You're getting some fame in Boston. You got the last name O'Reilly. Everything kind of comes and fits together. They love the <laughs> hardcore like, Irish. Like, tell me about like God. We, could you? Was there a point where you just you couldn't even walk around town? I mean, did people come up to you and say, "Let's do a bar. I want a restaurant. We'll put your name on it." Like, ex- like set that up for us. Yeah, no, it was it was a gradual thing. You got to keep in mind uh, when I came along, uh, they had just won two two cups, seventy and seventy two, and I wasn't a part of either one of those teams. Yeah. So, you know, all the fans in New England already had their favorite players picked out: uh, Esposito, or Cashman, uh, Johnny Busick, Jerry Cheevers. You know, there was there were a lot of great great players uh, so it it took time for me to uh you know to uh become uh part of the community um uh, but uh, you know it was it was i can't say anything bad about it it was very welcoming uh playing in the boston garden and living in the new england area it was, what it about was, uh, yeah go ahead sorry yeah go ahead it's freezing what, cold is what but, it was, but what, but what about like a guy like Bobby Orr? Like, what what could he do yeah. away from the rink, off the ice? Like, could he go enjoy dinner and go out without being hassled, even on the road? I mean, had yeah. you ever seen anyone get as much attention as he did, you know, away from oh, the rink? I I still think he does. I he's I don't think he can go anywhere. He is so recognizable. Uh, he he looks like he could still play. I mean, the the shape that he's in. Uh, except I think he's had both knees replaced now. Oh yeah. Uh, but he, uh, you know, he's still got the same hairdo and the same Bobby Orr nose. <laughs> and, and I don't think he could walk through the streets in Boston without being recognized, but he's, uh, he handles it with more grace than I've seen anybody in the game handle it. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Was he just like a great teammate too? Like, did he ever present himself like, like he was bigger than the rest of the group, even though everybody knew he was because he was such a great player, or was he just one of the boys and that's what he wanted to be? Yeah, yeah. He never, never uh, got full of himself. Never showed that side to us. Uh, and uh, to me, as a rookie, uh, other than the good elbow in the nose during the scrimmage, which was a lesson, <laughs> uh, he was more than gracious. You know, he. I, I can't say enough nice things about Bobby. What was the travel like back then? I mean, you get done with a game. I mean, was there food waiting for you? Was there food on the plane? Like, like just kind of describe that whole setup as far as, like, getting to point A to point B. And, of course, you'd see how it is today, which is, like, you got lobster on the plane. You got it private. And they jazz. still complain, Terry. And they, they still, still bitch complain. about stuff, Terry. And you're grinding yeah. it. You're not even wearing a helmet. Throwing left heat on big guys. Like, how, how, were the planes nice? Was it tough going through customs and, and walking through the airport? Like, that kind of had to be a pain in the ass the way you look at it now. Yeah. I, you know, when I was with the Rangers briefly uh, in 2002, 2003 as an assistant coach, we uh, had a uh, charter plane for all of our road trips. It belonged to Cablevision, yeah. 
yeah. who, who own the uh, Rangers and they own the Knicks and the Liberty. Uh, so we traveled by pretty well out of a private airport. And, and uh, when you mentioned the lobster, I remember after one game on the road, we got on the plane, there were these big platters of uh, seafood and lobster and oh, shrimp and, God. you know, and it, it, I, my memory flashed back to the days when I was with the Bruins and there'd be a, a ham and cheese sandwich wrapped in cellophane, or, you know, oh. <laughs> so, you know, I, I mean, that's just the way it was back in the day. Uh, there wasn't as much money involved in the game. Uh, and uh, therefore there wasn't as many uh, perks as far as food and, and uh, treatments like that when we, and, and the, and the plane, the charter plane wasn't always the best either. A little prop job. What was the uh, what was the most you would have made in one season? And like compare that to a guy like Esposito, Bobby Orr. Like how much how much were the big dogs in the league? How much were they making at that time too? Well, in seventy one, when I signed my first contract, my I had a two way contract, a minor league salary of uh, it was twelve or thirteen thousand dollars. And uh, an NHL salary that was, uh, I think it was 45 or 50. So not much money, is it? God. What about the big dogs? Like what was Bobby Orr and those? What, what were they Hundred making? Grand? Well, back then, I wouldn't know. You know, I, I didn't even, <laughs> there's no point in me comparing my salary to them because I wasn't in their league. Uh, I, I know that they've dramatically escalated uh Oh, you know, I mean, Charlie, Charlie Simmer and uh, Marcel Dion out in L.A., they were getting crazy money, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars a year Ooh. when we were when we were down around one hundred, two hundred. You know, so there was a big di- discrepancy between some teams and the Boston Bruins. But the, on the other hand, Boston was one of the strongest franchises. It had a great history. It was and living in New England, in Boston, you can't beat it. So uh, a lot of players sort of took a took a, a bit of a break in uh, in the salary to to stay in Boston. I think you know. I know I know in the later pa- stages of my career, I had an opportunity to leave Boston, and one location was St. Louis. Mm. Uh, Lou, Nan- Lou Nanny was uh, trying to draw me away from Boston, uh, and the numbers were a lot bigger than what I was getting offered in Boston. But by then, you know, I had kids and uh, I had established myself in Boston and I was getting near the end of my career. I really didn't want to move and put on another Jersey in another city. So were you set up though? Did you look at your, your finances at the time? You're like, damn, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to work the rest of my life for one. And do you look at like, God, if I was born 20 years later, (laughs) You know, thirty years later, and playing in the nineties, you would have you'd have made really good money. And do you ever like kind of look at it and be like, "Damn, I just kind of wish I played in the nineties." You know, if it all depends on what you do with your money. You know, yeah. when I remember that uh, twenty five thousand dollars signing bonus they told you about. Yeah. yeah. Well, I bought a cottage for twelve thousand dollars, and if I sold it today, it'd, uh, it'd be worth three fifty. Damn right. Yep. You really, know, so, you, you still have so it. You, if you get money early and do something with it, you know, you have a lot more money later. So uh, when I, uh, near the end of my career, I started investing in commercial real estate. I couldn't have done that if I didn't have a little bit of money saved up from uh, playing professional hockey. Yeah. And, you know, and so I bought some apartment buildings and some plazas and they're worth some decent money today because the real estate just keeps going up. So, it all comes out in the end in the wash. So yeah, it does. Hey, somebody yeah. told me a story about you today. How you went to uh, the hospital with an ear infection. Hey. You know what story I'm talking about? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I had. Uh, it wasn't just an ear infection. I but know. That's what. That was the diagnosis in the hospital. Uh, I had played two games on the road. Uh, the first game. I had a collision with one of my own teammates, Mike Milbury, got cut, got cut under my, well, actually over the eye, my eyebrow, and I had a black eye. Right? So the doctor stitched me up, and we, we went into Atlanta the next night, and uh, 
there's that they had a big guy, Noel Picard, defenseman. Oh, and yeah. He, oh yeah. Yeah, he had a reputation for being big and mean, good fighter. And and they're the older guys on the team are telling me this. You know, watch him. He he's got a bad temper. This and that. They told me everything about him, except that he was left-handed. They didn't tell me that. Oh, okay. So I bumped into Noel in the corner, and he took offense, and his left went up in the air, blocked out the TV lights, and came down. And he popped me once on the other eye, cut me in the eyebrow, on the inside of the nose. And under the eyes, I had stitches in three places and, and two black eyes, well, stitches in four places. So I came out in the next period after they sewed me up, and I've got the puck, and I'm trying to do a wraparound. Uh, and the goalie comes from one post to the other trying to block it, but he, he swings his stick. And as I'm coming around the side of the net, the stick hits me on the bridge of the nose, breaks, breaks my nose and, and cuts it. So I go back in, and I get stitched up again. So I've got stitches in five places on my face. I've got a broken nose and I've got two black eyes. And I, we get on the plane and it's a charter back to Boston. And we're halfway home and I'm not feeling well at all. And uh, one of the guys goes up and gets the doctor at the front of the plane. He comes back and looks at me. He looks in my ears and he said, uh, you might have an ear infection. I'm going to take you over to the mass general hospital when we land so we land and drive over to the hospital to the emergency ward and he uh checks me in and he lances both ears they're both infected so he lances both ears and gives me something to sleep and so now i haven't shaved for a couple of days and i wake up at six o'clock in the morning and there's this uh senior doctor at the foot of my bed you know he's got silver sideburns and a nice white crisp jacket with a tie and he's got five or six little dr ducklings you know uh, interns so and he's pulling them the ropes and so he's going to each patient so he picks up my clipboard and he says and i just came in the night before and he says okay here we've got uh and he looks at my chart and he flips through all the pages you know and he's looking at my face i've got stitches in five places my nose is all over my face my, my both my eyes are black and uh, he says, and here we've got an ear infection. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jesus. Guy, yeah. I mean, you look like you just got, like, you know, attacked. Like, oh, the, in, you got hit oh, by a yeah. truck. In the back alley or something. Yeah. No, yeah, how's was, your head? Oh, we all laughed. We, I mean, I started laughing. The doctor started laughing. You know, it was <laughs> so. And then I explained to them. I said, I had a I had a rough hockey game last night. So. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that was a listen, sudden... listen, guys, I've, I've got a. Uh, head out in a, in a few seconds here. Uh, my wife is taking me into a an antique store. So oh my god, you love gotta, the antique stores, don't you? Oh, yeah, I heard all yeah. about that. Can I ask too. you one more question yeah. about Happy Gilmore, real quick? I mean, I just wanted to get well, this out. You got well, well yeah. Technically, I, that's a question right there. But <laughs> ask me one more. Oh, well, just just the, the whole Happy Gilmore thing, and you know, Adam Sandler and him pumping your tires up throughout that huge hit. I mean, was that pretty cool? Did you meet him? Did you talk to the cast members or anything like that? No, I didn't meet him. I got a letter uh, asking for my permission to use my name and uh, likeness in one of their scenes. And uh, I showed it to my son, Evan, and he, he was just tickled. You know, he, he loved Adam, Adam Sandler. So I, uh, you know, they weren't offering any money. They just needed me to sign a release. So uh, I did that. And then I photocopy it mailed it back to them but i photocopied it and uh, and i would keep it whenever i i met a young hockey fan that was also an adam sandler fan uh, we'd start talking about that and i would photocopy my copy and give him a copy so it, it's just a nice little souvenir to have andy strickland and cam jansen yeah. here for you for gadgetbuyback.com yeah. gadget lab they got a store here locally if you're in st louis 5541 telegraph road here's the deal you got an old phone maybe a cracked tablet maybe it's perfect but it's a little bit older mm. turn it in right now www.gadgetbuyback.com upgrade your devices phones computers watches anything doesn't have to be apple either no. Get those tablets turned in. Again, www.gadgetbuyback.com, 877-772-8880. Now back to the interview. Yeah. Okay, last thing uh, for you from me, and then we'll let you go. 
uh, health wise, how you doing now? I mean, how's your body holding up? Do you have any lingering effects from your from your hockey career? And I'm curious, how many suspensions did you have over the course of your career? I know the one eight game suspension. How many other were? Uh, how many Andy others Van were there? <laughs> yeah, I I had a ten gamer for uh, hitting Andy Von Helleman. That was the longest, and the eight gamer for uh, the New York incident. And then I think I had a three game one for another incident with a referee and. That was voted there for suspensions. Go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and they're yeah, all the, and the, all the, worth the two it. with the referees. If I could take those back, uh, it, in the heat of the game, I lost my temper and and uh, I, I was not. I'm to this day, I'm not really a fan of of uh, some of the NHL officials, but no excuse for what I did. So, all right, uh, well, no we'll, we'll, we'll bring you back on for that. And be honest. Are you dragging your wife into the antique yeah. store, or is she dag- dragging you in there? Which one is he it? Loves well, it. she was driving, okay? <laughs> she was driving. But, you know. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, we get it, dude. I, I, hey, you're a legend, man. That's are. great. Thank uh, you so much for your time. Appreciate it. All right. Take it easy on John now, will you? Okay, yeah, we you always do. See Terry. All right. That was episode number 98, Terry O'Reilly. He is a stud. He is. And... He does regret going after Andy Van Helleman. Okay, so he fucking punched Andy Van. Helleman, yeah, you can't dude. do that. Can you do and that? Are, is that allowed? I thought it was. No, it's not. Did you ever accidentally punch a I, uh, linesman? Not even. Fuck. Accidentally during a fight, like he was nope. trying to break it no, up, no, and no. you're swinging. If they're breaking it up, I'm done. Are you? Because they let because I wave them off for forty I know, minutes. I know. Why they, was? Why did you do that all the time? It's my style. Styles make fighters, Andy. Ooh. Styles make fighters and that's my fucking style and everybody's like wow you're in such that great sounds shape like a- i'm like i'm on painkillers i'm boozing all night i just sucked it up everybody's like you're in such good shape no he wasn't i partied harder than anybody else they only re- i'm about to have a heart attack but i suck it up like a man and i just keep it going so i can entertain the fucking did fans. brewer know you were doing all that who brewer i never heard of him he probably didn't like was he my captain? Your captain oh was he he was a great captain he was a good captain oh he was yeah how did we do that year well, the team wasn't very good. Mm. Oh, he was a great captain. Big Wall was really like the guy, right? Didn't he kind of run the room? He was a fucking guy. He ran the room when Bax. I tell Bax that all the time. Right, he did. And just like Walt was Steve, a fucking and, man. And, and if Walt needed to say something to me, he would. Mm-hmm. Oh, Anybody yeah. else? I'm like, what? What? Jax? What? He? Jax would never say no. Nah, dude, Walt was a fucking man. Jax was a leader in the room, though. Yeah, but but Walt was. If there's if I was a little too crazy, which I never really got, like I never got in trouble or anything, I never slept in. I was always the first one there. Were you? Oh my god, yes. Always, oh, always on time. Even on hardcore painkillers, where I couldn't even sleep the night before. I'd get there before everybody else, and I'd feel so guilty about myself that I would always be there early. So no one had an excuse. I never got in trouble. I wasn't burgy and slept in. I wasn't OSHA. Did sh- I didn't do any of that shit. I did my own private shit, my own life. I had two different lives. My hockey player life with the Blues, and then all my fucking buddies and my family. I had two different lives. I never was late for anything. I was partying harder than anybody else, and I just sucked it up, man. Mm-hmm. And so if Walt told me to do something, I'd do it. You would do it. If Brewer said something, I'm like, ah, what, what the if fuck? Rick, Rick Walmsley told you to do something? I almost fucked him up one I time, too. I'm not going to But you would still do I it. I love him, by the way. Yeah, now. he's the best. I'll, I'll, he's get, such I'll, a I'll get Walmer on. Get his on, ass man. on. I'll get him on. All these guys I beat, and I don't mean to be that way, because no, I'm the, the fuck up. the fucking man. I'm the I love fuck the up. And I love Walmer. I chirp guys, but I'm still the fuck up. And I know that. And I was always the fuck up, and I get that. Yeah, you're chirping Brew, but he may chirp you. He may have a chirp for you. Chirp me back. Of course he does. When we get Brewer on. Get him on. I want that. I want be humble me. Why am I mad? Humble me. Let me know. Well, I think we need to work it out. Do it. Because you know the rule and is whoever comes on the podcast on is like automatically on our team. Oh, I know. You want to be on our team? <laughs> we got a pretty big team. I'm not going to lie to you. We got, some happy, too. we got the fucking toughest team in the league. We got the most sophisticated team in the league. We're balancing everything. Mm-hmm. We got the shit kickers. We got the fucking owners. We got the G. What, what else do you want? I'm texting with an Seriously. owner today who's in Kauai. Just hanging out. What other? What? Who else you and guys want? These Seriously. guys. These guys just live the life, man. They love it. I mean, hey, it's that's, that's the what. That's what they should do. Need- I said to Cam, I'm not going to say who it was, but a very well known NHL owner. I said, okay, this guy is still in, in Hawaii, and he's like, good. You 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 tell him to fucking kick his feet up and fucking enjoy. It. <laughs> <laughs> and he should. Yeah. He, he should, should do the interview with us from Hawaii. I want to yes. know what his setup is. Yeah. <laughs> Kick your fucking feet up on the beach and you're you're a billionaire. So I did tell him. I don't even really even know him. I'm like, okay, Kick uh, your feet up. Kick your feet up. Fuck enjoy you. yourself. Send me some pics. That's what yeah. I said. 
and then He's sit there like, the and do the fucking podcast with us, dude. This fucking guy and look, me I when I'm in Kauai. I just want people to think I'm. I, 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 when I rip brew and uh, some guy, I can't suck everybody's cock, uh, although I'd kind of like to, but I don't. And I'm certainly not sucking his dick. I'm not going to say how big it is because I already told Roman Polak and Sabaka, I'm not going to go down, down that road. But the point is, like, I, I have to chirp some people, and not everybody was great to me. Not that that mattered because I was a dipshit, but I got to call you out one way, though. That's it. Is that cool? Well, I just think there's something lasting that we have to. I don't remember. We have but to I cut through. We got to figure out. We get gotta, them on. We got to peel back the layers. Get them on. This is therapy. You know that. No, it's for them. It is. Yeah. So we have to peel back the layers. Get them on. He got mad at me one time because I told him that he played uh, that his new a position pussy? was punt, ret- pussy. <laughs> punt returner. When he was in Tampa Bay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. remember the way they played oh, fuck. under um, the coach Mark. who went to Ottawa. Oh yeah, yeah. you remember what I'm talking about. I, why am I forgetting his uh, name? He's got a French-Canadian name. They went to the conference final when he got traded to uh, Tampa Bay. I can't believe I'm forgetting this coach's name. It's like, driving me crazy. Shit. No, so they were like really good in the playoffs, but they played this system that people were kind of critical of and where, like, the defense would not get up ice. <laughs> maybe one would. Like, a strong a side defenseman now, eh? maybe would get up ice, but, like, the weak side guy would hang back. He wouldn't even, like, cross his own blue line. So I told him, I was like, you, you basically play punt return. Like, how, how hard is that? So, like, then they would just lob it back, and they he would just catch back, it, just catch it, and then move it back up ice. Kill but, time. But, right. but they were successful. They win. They would win. No, they didn't win. They didn't win a lot no, in they Ottawa. Fucking didn't but win. they got to the conference final. Why that's am I forgetting anything? You're winning. supposed to help me with that. You played against this guy. Jacques Martin? It wasn't him. Was it... Uh, Somebody will tell me right away, and I feel like, <clears> a, you know... Was it... Um, who's the dude for the uh, player... La, 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 la. Coach uh, Montreal, too, who... Uh, oh, who Therian. The Therian. No, Michel Therian. It wasn't Michel Therian. He was so hardcore and a tough guy, dude. I heard so many stories about him. We gotta get his oh, ass Michelle on. Oh, Michel Therian. Get his fucking ass I've on. I've heard. He is so hardcore. I heard so Players many Players who played for him in, like, in Pittsburgh... They absolutely oh, hated him. They hated him. But he was cool to some guys. And all the heavies would talk to me throughout the years. And they're like, oh, my God, this motherfucker. Get his ass on, Andy. Get that Michelle motherfucker Tarion? on. Tarion? Get him on. I want Brewer. I want Michelle Tarion. I want Gretter. Who else we got? Cicerelli. Cicerelli. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, we're still, you know, we, we respect our hierarchy. Guy Boucher. Great guy. It's all good. But... Michelle Terrian was a hardcore guy. I want him on. I want Brewer. I want Gretter. I want Dino Cicerelli. Favorite part about the Terry O'Reilly interview? Do you have one? You know, I, I think that... He almost went to SLU. He think, almost went to SLU. I don't think that he knew how to talk about stories. Like, I, I think that this guy has so many stories under his belt that he doesn't even know how to, like... Can I ask you this? Do you get my drift Let me on ask this? You this. Do you get, do you think it's not Bobby Plager. Who were so crazy... And so wild, yeah. and left their mark on the history of the game for being absolutely wild. They almost, in their own mind, won't admit to themselves how crazy and I, wild they were. I know. We're like, if you ask They're me like, something. No, I was not. I was there. You ask me I, something, like, let me break it all down yeah. for you. Although, oh, we went into Harry's and the fucking I don't think he's a big fan of uh, Milbury, though. No, I don't think so either. Because he said, I, I don't, he kind of likes to be opinionated and stuff know, like that. Andy, it's so weird because we have so many different – I learned so much from all these guys, man. Like, honestly, like I – Smart guy, though. He's they, invested a lot of money and he's totally, made money. Totally. Because we asked, I go, how much yeah. – Don't you wish you would fucking He was cool. In the super nice guy. He was guy, so cool. Though, and yeah. he did – like, these guys aren't used to this shit, mm-hmm. okay? We're like, you want to do a podcast? They he's didn't, like, they didn't, what does it mean? They didn't interview him like this back when they were yeah, playing? Yeah, no shit. And so I'm like, I just don't think they realize how big they are. Mm-hmm. And then we, we talk about these big stories, and he thinks that everybody understands it, but they don't. There's no video back then. There's no yeah. any, like, there kind of is. They're or, very modest. They're so modest where I'm like, stop being modest. You're a fucking pimp. You're a fucking killer in a killer's age of hockey. Pump yourself up. Talk about your left heat. Talk about going to a bar, and everybody knows your badass hair, and you had a cut over your eye, and, like, fucking women are on me. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, say that. Like, that didn't happen. How does that not happen? I'm a piece of shit, and that happened to me every night. And it didn't happen to you in Boston, 600 points? Right. I just, I don't know. And 2,000 pims. I mean, fuck. And his jersey's hanging from the rafters exactly. in and a you city like it? Boston where yeah. if you're not a Hall of Famer, you're not getting your name to the rafters. Thank you. Th- thank you. you exactly I mean? right. Dude, he's and a like, You fucking... got your name to the rafters? I know. I just I mean, don't I know think... You... They're humble, Andy. They're just humble people. That's like putting like... I know. Twister... In the rafters, although Twister didn't have 200 goals and 600 points. I had more points. points than Twister, I think. Did you? He scored two goals in one game. 
Oh, fuck. Never mind then. <laughs> he did against Tampa Bay. Twister. Afternoon game. We love him. I love mm-hmm. Twister. Can we? I oh, no, we got to have our year. I ain't it's playing. been a year now. We no. need to go back out there. We're going back out there. Yeah. And he's going to scare you again, Andy. No, he's not. No, he is. Yeah, we shouldn't do no. that. We shouldn't encourage that. Fuck that. Eh, I don't need no. that. We're out. No, I don't That's give a, a shit if you need scary, it. No, no, no. Yeah. I don't give a shit if you need it. This is way out in the middle of nowhere. Bah. <laughs> it don't matter now. Oh, man. And he's going to scare you. Oh, I don't want to. Why I, are, then we're not going and, out there. Oh, no, yes, we are. He's going to scare you, put you <laughs> down are again. Why you doing boy. that? He's going to put you down. <laughs> Twister, people ask me about Twister, man. I go, he's a, I'm the, I, I fucking, I know tough guys, man. I, I, I know I have my buddies. Twister might be the scariest human being I've ever met in my life. And I know MMA guys. Mm-hmm. I know hardcore fucking scary What makes him so dealers. scary? Because he's so unpredictable. Like, you just don't know what he's capable of I doing just know what? what he does. I know what he's done. Oh, yeah. I know how he reacts. I know his circle. I yeah. know how he thinks. That's, that's it. He's the scariest, the he's coolest. Got a, there's a circle. But he's a, but he's a he, sweetheart. He would do anything for he, you. Though, if man. I called him Andy, if we're, we're fucking Clayton, if we got fucking jammed up going to our car. He'd be right here. I'd call him in two seconds, mm-hmm. and he'd be here with an army of people, mm-hmm. and he'd settle it. Would you call Brewer or no? Oh, fuck. He'd be like, what's going on, guys? I'm like, bro, I'm getting held up by gunpoint. Oh, what are guns? Guns should be illegal for that's, everybody. He'd be like, that's your fault for being that's there. That's your fault. I'm rich. <laughs> I'm rich. You should be richer. Okay? You won't get held up like that. <laughs> Fucking nerd. You should be richer. Anyway, we'll get him on. It's all good. I know we got. We are gonna get. It. So if you talk to Brew, just let him know we're going. Actually, <laughs> he, he, he knows. He knows. He's gonna fucking I know, kill me. I know. I don't I know. care. It's all. Good. I like him. He's. Oh, he's whatever. the best, man. He's I love Brew. Good guy. Great. Oh, great yeah. sense of. Humor. <laughs> <laughs> great sense of humor. You're funny man. No, he was funny. Yeah, uh, he great. was. Yeah, all right, yeah. Car Shield. <laughs> it's not funny if you get stuck with uh, a big time bill, man. Before 2021, oh, you've worked so hard throughout the year. You've overcome a lot of adversity with the pandemic. Yep. Don't waste it all on like shit that has to go down with your car. You don't need all that. You don't need the headache. Like no. You, so like, take care of yourself. That's what we're trying to tell you. Okay, take care of yourself. 800-857-2481. Put it in your phone right now. Just plug it in there. 800-857-2481. Mention the promo code CAM. You're going to save 10%. Check out carshield.com and do it today. We've got a new video that we put out. That's going to be out there very soon. Jamie did a great job looks, putting that together. I look awesome. In, in high resolution. What does that even mean? Did you get the bald spot in my back of my head, though? You did? Fuck. Oh, no, it's in high resolution. Edit that out. It's in high resolution. All right, Bud Light Seltzer. Um, we told you in the uh, intro, you want to impress all your like high-end friends, even though like you're probably having parties this year over Zoom because you can't have more than like 10 or 12 people. Those are people. fun parties. <laughs> okay. But you want to impress and be like, listen, yeah. I had a great year. I am successful. I have I a variety su- pack. Yes. They're like, oh, you have a Fuck. variety pack. Yes. The Bud Light Seltzer Variety Pack. Not everybody has one, but if you do, you separate yourself from the mix. I like how you brought this up. And let me explain that. I'll I'll expand on this. Mm -hmm. So if you're having a party and you come in and all the wives are like, I'm sick of my fucking husband. Okay. My fucking husband's a fucking loser. Although he makes money, but he's a fucking nerd. And you come in and they see you. And they have a variety pack. And they're like, oh my God. I wish I... Why is my husband so nerdy when I can have you with this fucking variety pack? My husband would never buy this variety pack. I know. And they come to your house, you're like, oh, and they're dancing and having fun. Oh, yeah. like, that's like, like, that's... And the husband's like, why are you having why fun? Why are you having fun? Go back to my house and not have fun. Let's go. I've, okay? got, a, I've got a call in the morning. I get a call in the morning. I'm and a doctor. I'm golfing before that. I'm golfing. I'll see okay? you on Tuesday, and it's okay. Friday. You need to talk, about the, talk to the maid and have them clean the house before I get up to go. I will see you next Wednesday. It's Friday. Fuck you. I got fucking Bud Light Seltzer at my fucking house, and now all the wives want to fucking hang out over here all the yeah. fucking time. Probably because of my wife. Why are you texting? Probably because of my wife. And they want to. They want to hang out with my wife they all have damn a day. Variety pack. And they're like, my wife's got variety packs left and right. Like that's what she's a fucking badass bitch. Okay, you want to be one of them? Get rid of that fucking nerdy husband of yours. Don't do that. Actually, save no, your child. No. Save your children. Save your marriage. Yes. It doesn't matter. But if you do go to a fucking party and there's Bud Light Seltzers cruising around save and you ain't marriage. got none. Your wife's going to be like, this dude's a fucking pimp. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Save your marriage by having some variety packs <laughs> and getting an ugly him. Christmas sweater <laughs> pack. Save, save, <laughs> save your, your marriage. marriage by- <laughs> get, a, get a variety pack. You want to impress your girl. Oh, my God. God, we reach. If you we? want your girl to think you're cool and <laughs> yeah. that she's not just married to you because exactly. of money, <laughs> which, that's the only reason why for oh, reality. Fuck. 
It's get a variety pack. Then she'll think you're cool. Oh, it's so funny. Not man. like a new Louis. Not some diamonds. No, no, no. Variety no, get pack. a variety pack yeah. under the tree. Put a little bow on that baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god That's Don't what go we're to talking about If you don't have it at your house And you go to a party man like, oh. Don't bring your wife Who's your She's staying there If you don't have it She's fucking staying there dude hmm. If you let her go to the party I, I, She's not coming party. home She's not coming like, home like, God, I gotta try the whole so variety funny, dude. Get that ugly Christmas sweater pack Do it today with Bud Light Seltzer Yeah Don't forget about our favorite flavor What's yours? Mango Mango baby Yeah uh, Keep it handsome Now Here's the thing if you don't have a variety pack, and you're thinking, well, how am I going to keep my girl? pussy? Did, I mean, okay, I didn't say no, that. I didn't no, mean to say, well, I didn't why mean do you have to say that? I didn't that? mean to say that. Yeah, I can't believe you said that. I didn't mean to. Okay, you all you have to do is I, rub your hair with a little head balm. I got a bald spot in the back of my head. Get a little beard yeah, moisturizer. That's right. Get the gel wax. Okay. Get the sculpting paste. Put Ooh, that on. God. And then, on top of it all, put that fight ugly hoodie and say, on. Smell me. And say, smell, smell me. me. Smell me. And she's like, oh, I didn't like you because you didn't have a variety yeah, pack. I and smell now stinky. I do. And now you do. When I put that on and I go, Kate, come over here right quick. She's like, ah, oh, you probably smell like B.O. You're, you're chewing. Your, your breath stinks. Your hands are sweaty. You're I'm chewing. Like, I'm like, no, no, girl. I love you. I just put on this badass hair balm. I got a beard moisturizer from Keep It Handsome. Smell me. And then she smells me. She's like, oh, my word. It's head balm. It goes into your scalp. She's like, oh, my word. Yeah. You smell handsome. Mm -hmm. Can I make love to you? And yeah. I'm like, wait a second. Wait. I'm going to eat breakfast first. Then I'm going to use the restroom. Then I might take a shower so I'm fresh. And then I'm fun to do this. I'm going to put more shampoo well, in my head. Shampoo and, and then she smells shit. me again like, oh, my God. Make yeah. love me. I'm taking the day off. Mm -hmm. Then she takes the day off right. and make love all, right. all day. Right, right. Yeah. And then she's like, you want to go golfing for the next seven yes, days because you smell good. Fine. Yes. Cam, as long as you smell good, you, you can do whatever you want. golfing for the next 29 days in a row? Cam, <laughs> spend whatever you want. Go go out, to, go out to Pebble Beach with the bodies. Oh, yeah. Take the private jet. Take You're the private fine. jet. Smell good. I've I got want the you to smell kids, good. And I'm going to let the nanny have off, too. And I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of everything. I don't know how to cook. I'm going to pay the bills. I don't bills. know how to clean. I don't know what to do. Yeah, they do know how to cook and clean, okay? <laughs> I don't know how to do that. No, actually, I kind of do know how to cook mm. and clean. No, you can't. Clean. I'm not good at, like, I'm good at, like, organizing My clean. cooking actually has been so good. I have a new uh, oven. Oh, would you put grass in something to feed your fucking Lemon kids? Lemon grass, like, like man. Fucking Lemon grass is what you, you use. You feed your kid fucking grass like they're cattle, and I don't like it. Lemon grass don't like is kind of like a Vietnamese uh, ingredient. It's like Thai ingredient. I'm at my engineer I right can now. cook with some. Uh, I can cook with some lemongrass too. Sometimes I just have to look at my engineer, who we think alike, and I just shake my head against Andy. Andy cooks <laughs> his kids. Andy kid. agrees with me. Andy, Andy loves the food I cook. Andy gives his kids grass. He puts it in a skillet and cuts <laughs> grass with fucking clovers in there and said, "This is what rich people do. Yeah, <laughs> eat this. Fuck off. <coughs> Jesus oh my fucking God. Christ." That's hey, get, get, get into reality here. That is unbelievable. No, fucking seriously. Your kids need to eat some fucking meat, dude. Mm. Get, feed them some shit. Yeah. They need like a, they need a full stomach when they go to bed. The poor kids are probably like starving to death when they're like, oh, God, my stomach's growling. I only had grass today and <laughs> fucking clovers. <laughs> what the fuck's wrong oh, with you? Oh, man. Bellman. Bellman. Bellman.com. Oh, fuck. They want your used car and they want it now. So give it to them and they'll buy it for you. Yeah. And okay. you know what? Then you can drive off in a new set of wheels and look good when you show up to the Christmas party. Okay? In a new set of wheels. Isn't that nice doing that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I had to like you Everybody's at GMC. Like look at all the Christmas selection. Like, right. don't, don't tell me you can't find something you don't like. Oh, You've got something for everybody. You have something for everybody. Honestly, you talk about a variety pack. I'll take that fucking you, Buick. You talk about a variety pack. They've got a Buick. They've got a variety pack out there in Troy, Missouri right now with the Cadillac Buick GMC and then the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. That's a variety pack. And they oh, you got that all of them. You. No, you, you can you try all of them. Well, then you, I want a fucking Buick. I don't give a shit. No, you get an Enclave, yeah. With and, 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 and I know, I know. Tiger did it, and he was like, "Ah, oh, cool. I'm fucking Tiger Woods. I'm gonna fucking make that thing pimping. I'm mm. fun to make that to thing to the pimping. next level. Yeah, like I'm pimp daddy. Yeah. Like I'm gonna fucking play heavy metal I in that. I need that mug. Escalade. I need that Escalade. You need something cool to make yourself like cooler. I need something nerdier to make myself a little bit nerdier. Here's the <laughs> difference. 
<laughs> I'm gonna pull up in that fucking Buick, like, what's up, baby? I got fucking Ronnie James Dio, 1986. Ronnie sing. James, he's Stop singing fucking. That. No, that's, no, not, no, that's fuck not helping you. you. Heaven and hell, and he's fucking jamming the that's fuck out. That's not helping. And I got you. the boys, like, what's up? What's up? What's up? And then they fucking take my car yeah. and I go in and I and I'll play like some leftover Baker's salmon, dozen. some leftover salmon, like which is a band. Like is that a food? Bluegrass. Bluegrass. Bela, Bela Fleck. The same bluegrass you feed your kids. No, a little Bela Fleck. Yeah. Who? Yeah, Get try it. Yeah, on. that's what I mean. You don't even know. God, hey, try it. All you listeners, <laughs> you fucking let him know. Just let him know how ridiculous he is. Please. Little Bela Thank Fleck. You. I love you all. Try that too. Okay. Bluegrass. A little widespread panic. We're going to listen to Bluegrass, Ty, and you know what we're going to have for dinner. I'm going to cook bluegrass for you, <laughs> and you're going to eat fucking grass all night. Bellman.com, B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Get there today and drive off with a new set of wheels and talk to Dan Bellman because he, 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 may, be awesome. the, he may be the coolest car dealer Hockey in the guy. country, just hockey awesome. guy, awesome. Just Down the, the man. Earth. Your wife could talk to him. That's right. Your fucking your your little sister mm-hmm. could talk. Anybody could talk to him. Yeah. Unlike, you know, yeah, we we know how it is. I, I, I've places. been I've been a little too much. On okay, this one. let's give. I'm it a little a break too much. I think people are going to be like, Cam needs to calm down. You know what happens at the other yeah, dealers? I ain't saying swinging yeah, dick shit. Yeah, yeah. You I know, ain't you, saying you no know, swinging dick. You know, you know what's going on. All right, we will have our hats up on the camandstrick.com very soon. www.camandstrick.com because we collaborated with our boy out there yeah. in, uh, Denver. in Denver, Colorado, Victor Hockey. Check out VictorHockey.com. Look at all their hats they have. Victor Hockey USA. That's their Twitter. That's their Instagram. What's his title again? He's got a title on the podcast. Pimp. <laughs> you change it every time. You my see, memory sucks. <laughs> it really does. You don't remember what you said last time. No, I don't. Oh, my God. Jesus. What, what, like a week ago? Yeah. Fuck so, no. So, the, so there's a chance those hats could be available there one day. But right now www.camandstrick.com. Check it out. If you've missed any other episodes, Michael Dane. Oh, he's fucking awesome. Can you by spell the way. Dane? No, but here's the deal. We're gonna have other uh, uh, shit that we're selling too from oh, Fight yeah. Ugly. Oh yeah, and Victor Hockey. No, we're collaborating Dude, we're, with like lots yeah. of people. And just, just and again, a lot of people out. reached out about like advertising and sponsoring on the show. I'm getting back to everybody, yeah. all of you. Any, of the, if you missed the last episode, you want to come on board. So is that what they're talking about with you with about? Us? Oh yeah. So. You get those. I get like no, I, I have get a, a of, no, I drug get a, addiction. Yeah, I get those, too. <laughs> and they want to. They send me <laughs> like eight paragraphs, and I have to read it. And then I'm like, I can't respond because I type sucky, and I can't like tell them my true feelings. So I have to call them. You voice, so now you I'm like, text. I'm a motherfucking therapist. Yeah, and I love it, Andy. I love it. I'm a doctor, actually. No, you're not. No. I'm a therapist. Keep it coming. I'll get back to you. I sort of fucking got okay, it. Keep it. Handsome. I do. I, I do it all night long. Yeah, Kate drives me. It, hey, Kate's like, can you, yeah. can you come to bed? I'm like, no, I'm, ta- I'm a therapist. Keep it handsome. Keep it handsome. All right. Yeah. This was episode number 98. Who's on episode oh. number 99? You never know. Well, it's up to Andy. Keep it's it here on you. the Cam and Strick podcast.